For years I've been seeing you in my dreams, and lately more and more. I know it's you, but I can no longer recognize your face. I don't know if I'd recognize you if I saw you. I hope your condition hasn't worsened much since you last wrote. I can hardly imagine what a nightmare you're going through. Remember, you're not alone. I'm sure our father would be happy to help, if only you asked him. I assure you that for now, I haven't said a word to him about your search or your health. Just as you requested. He doesn't know your intention. And with God as my witness, he'll not find out from me. I know, you think the only thing that can help you is a miracle. But such itinerant miracle workers... Preachers and folk mystics often take advantage of those in grave condition who are desperate or seeking help. I hope the man you're pursuing can actually ease your mind. But if not, remember that in the end, we will find a way to help you. Just because we can't see it now, does not mean it doesn't exist. Send word as soon as you get there. I want to know you're safe. With as much love as I have. Dikya. Could you spare a moment for me? I'd like to send a telegram. Of course. Pardon me, sir, but are you feeling all right? Yes, thank you. You're not looking your best. Thank you. What's your message? Take this down, please. Arrived. I think I have found him. I hope he will receive me. I will write as soon as I am able. And payment? On receipt. Anything to add at the end? Please add my love to you, my sister. Touching. From whom? My name is Viktor Shulski. S-Z-U-L-S-K-I. And Victor with a W, not a V. Interesting name. Where's this headed? Warsaw. Russia. And this is supposedly Georgia. Russia here and Russia there. Russia everywhere. On every map. Maps change. I know, I know. Let's get on with it. Pardon? I was talking to myself. Which way to the village? The coachman is picking up the mail. Maybe he'll give you a ride. Thank you. Looney.
Hello. Are you going to the village by any chance? Hello there. Where else? There's nowhere to go here, sir. The station, the village, and the cemetery. That's all. A horse can't go any higher. The village is what interests me. Well, if you've got reason to be there, climb in. So is it just locals living in the village? Who else would want to live in a shithole like this? I actually meant, is there anyone visiting, a guest? Ah, you came for some healing. Well, he's no guest here. He's been here months, my friend. The people are tormented, so he sure got folks to heal. Where might I find him? I bet he's still in the tavern. He prays this time of day. Oh, he prays a heck of a lot. You getting in, or what? I'd be grateful. Always nice to have someone to shoot the breeze with. Nothing to see around here. Ah, this is everything. Hard to get lost in this place. Head to the tavern over there, past the little square, up the steps. They'll tell you where the preacher's at. Or this time of day, he'll be there himself. Thank you. Gentlemen, is this the tavern here? Hey, Putnik. You coming from far? Indeed, I'm tired. Nice boots. Are they warm? I'm not here for long. I'm looking for a certain healer. First you gotta make a donation. To the Tsar's army. Warm boots, for instance. And a coat. He will need a coat once he's lost his boots. It's your Znami. We are the Tsar's soldiers. Those don't look like soldiers' faces. Closer to thieves. I don't think he'll talk to us voluntarily. Right. They won't report us. They'll be too embarrassed to admit some cripple got the better of them. Good boy. Forgive me, sir. Is your name Grigory Efimovich Rasputin? I forgive you. I'm sorry. It's just I've been looking for you for a very long time, and... And you expected a thinking simpleton. An illiterate who swindles sick people and claims he can speak to God himself. I already said I forgive you. Yes, I've heard. Especially in Petersburg. I've also heard about the healings. Even hopeless cases. Inexplicable ones. And what do you believe in? If you help me, I'll believe all of it. And please believe me when I say I've tried everything short of a miracle. 
And I know the meaning of that word. I'm a thaumaturge. Where are you coming from? I first learned of you in Paris. A charismatic miracle worker from Russia. I even heard about you from my doctors. By the time I got to Petersburg, you were already gone. I've crossed almost three continents, through Siberia, India, and half of Europe. But if you're asking me about my origins, I'm from Poland. From which Poland? The Russian one, the German one, or the part that belongs to Austria? From Warsaw. Do you have a name? Viktor Shulski. On my path, I've already come across people who've lied to me about their problems, and then gone around calling me a charlatan. After them, others arrived, with pitchforks and torches, and I had to endure insults and spit in my face, or flee for my life. And now you say you're a wizard from an imaginary country that no one has seen on a map in over a hundred years. Forgive my amusement. I haven't had my first coffee yet. I forgive you, and I'm still asking for help. Prove your thaumaturge, and I'll hear what you have to say. That's partly the issue I wanted to speak to you about. Does that mean you give up? That means I'll try, but I, I don't know. All right, all right. I've met a few of your kind, so I know what you're capable of. Find something in this tavern that belongs to me, and tell me something only I could know. First, I need to have something personal that belongs to you to learn your trace. It's a sort of pattern I'll use to recognize the other objects. Smell this. Have you figured anything out yet? I'll return to you in a moment. I can hardly wait. Let's take a look around. Even prayer can't dampen the wrath smoldering within Rasputin. Well, you're a zealous man. It permeates every level of your personality, your faith, your abilities. Not such an impressive discovery. I haven't finished yet. In Petersburg, you left behind a very devoted and very young lady-in-waiting. At least one, my friend. You didn't like your breakfast. Buckwheat with venison fat. You cursed the person who prepared it. You called her a hobbling cunt, correct? Have a seat. Tell me again, why were you looking for me? A few years ago, I attempted to catch a wild salutor, and that ended with me losing contact with my first salutor. That means I can't develop my abilities. I know that my Uber is there. Sometimes he shows himself, but I can't feel the link anymore. Generally speaking, I'm losing it more and more each day. If it disappears, my mind... I'll lose my sense of reality. I'll fall into madness. 
I don't know if I can help you. I don't have much dignity left. I'm prepared to beg for your help. That won't be necessary, Victor. I meant I don't know if I'm able to help you. My gift is something I've received from God. Some I've helped, others I can't say. And I've never treated a thaumaturge. Maybe just do the same with me as with the others. We can try. Focus on my voice. You are safe. As long as you can hear my voice, you are safe. Let me gaze into your mind. Let me see through your eyes. Let me... Well, where am I? Rasputin. There's no one in here. I need to get out of here. What is this sound? Shackles? You're blind. You've never grasped the science of spotting the perfectly obvious. Can you still not see? What do I supposedly not see? Flaw clouds your vision. It always has. Pride. Your damned pride and sense of superiority. I must have gotten that from you, father. You lose, idiot. You always do. You're even losing against yourself. You can't see, but can you at least hear? You're weak, stupid, and blind. Do you hear me? Do you? Do you? I can see, Father. Clearly. Will you be lying there much longer? I wanted to sweep. Where's Rasputin? Uh. In the cemetery, chasing away evil spirits and giving people comfort. You all right? Yes, yes. Absolutely. I wanted to sweep. I'm just heading out. It's so good to see you again. And something else. I saw him clear as day. It wasn't a vision. It was a salutar, unbound by a pact. A wild one. And if so, that means there's someone in the village with a flaw that's attracting it. You talking to me? I was praying. I wanted to sweep. Without lifting a finger, just Vesna will bring it, Vesna will help. But if Vesna needs help with something, there's nobody to be found. Hmm. That's not yours, don't touch! All these newcomers causing more problems. Am 
I sensing? I wanted to talk. Ma'am, please open the door. Please go. We didn't invite any guests over. I'm telling you, go away or I'll call for help. Help! Help! Somebody help me! What are you doing here, you tramp? I'm not looking for trouble. I just wanted to talk. We'll talk, all right. You could say that, sure. Excuse me. I need to get to the local cemetery. Could you give me a lift? I've only just come back from the post office this morning. I'm not getting the horse going again. Back to the cemetery. It's not like anyone there is going to run away. And look, my horse is more dead than alive. I'll be right back. I'm not going anywhere. Maybe you'll change your mind and drop me off at the cemetery after all. Hmm? Well, on the other hand, this place isn't much more exciting than the cemetery, and I meant to take the horse out for a ride, so get on. Does that mean I helped, Thamaturj? I don't have enough words, sir, to thank you for what you've done for me. I haven't felt this way in... years. I'm glad I could help. I see him. My Uper. He's back. I can feel our bond growing stronger as each moment passes. I'm happy for you, but do restrain your joy. We're in the cemetery. When I heard you were at the cemetery, I was sure I'd see you resurrecting the dead. Not yet. Today I'm just praying for rest for Vasily's soul. The whole village is suffering after his loss. He was the elder here. He cursed this place. 
Since he died, darkness and misfortune have hung over the village. You see, to them, every harm comes down to witchcraft. They believe that after Vasily's passing, the village was possessed by some monster that howls at night or some other yuffiets. What changed in the village after the Elder died? It's all dreadful, sir. Everything's gone topsy-turvy. When folks get to arguing now, they're so hot-headed. Before you know it, they're at one another's throats. Ladies have no patience for kids, nor lads for ladies, nor neighbors for neighbors. Any word might seem offensive and like an insult waiting to happen. Then you've got to fight. Tragedies such as Vasily's death leave their mark on everyone. It takes time to come to terms with something like this. That doesn't mean this place is possessed by dark forces. How did this elder die? There was a fire, sir. Flames shooting sky high, and him burning, swearing, speaking curses. And the curse stuck. Those ruins seem a profaned place now. A wicked spirit has taken over the blighted land. Don't encourage her. Once she gets going, it can't be stopped. This could also be the work of a salutar. What do you mean? As you were healing me, I had a dream, a vision. But on the borderline of sleep and wakefulness, I thought I saw a salutor. That's what might be influencing the villages and wailing at night. They're good people, but none too bright, Victor. I'm afraid they might be talking about a train. The wise woman was saying the evil spirit is a book of hatch. Does the creature hunting you rattle chains, slither around, and have a mouth full of giant fangs? A Bukovac. Where did this elder live? I'll show you. Let's allow Vasily's soul to rest for today. Amen. I felt something, so much suffering. Can you feel it? It's the smell of mystery. True fear. What do you expect to find in this place? The fire was almost a year ago. Uh, time doesn't matter much here. I'm looking for clues and personal traces that will lead me to whoever is carrying the floor that lured the Saluta here. I see. I thought I could be helpful to you, but... I don't really understand what you're telling me. Above all, flaws are deeply hidden marks left on human souls. They form under the influence of tragic events. What does that have to do with salutors? Is that Latin? Yes, from the word newcomer. People have always taken salutors to be spirits, demons, or imps. Like from those fairy tales, the wise woman and the other old crones tell the locals. Sometimes. Those sorts of fairy tales and legends describe how humans perceive a salutor. They don't take a physical form. Salutors are attracted to the flaws hidden within people. Thaumaturges discover these flaws inside someone, bring them to the surface, and adopt them to lure the salutor. Those are the moments when I've usually failed. I haven't been able to hold on to a salutor. I didn't know how to bind one to myself. What about you? 
Do you have a flaw? I bear the flaw of pride. I wouldn't have guessed. And now? Thanks to your help, I can once again discover people's flaws and the salutors hiding behind them. And I think I'm now able to catch my second salutor. People always leave behind individual bits of their personality, even on everyday objects and such. I can decipher the thoughts and actions imprinted on these objects, and then match them to their owner. This lets me gather immense knowledge about a person, especially if I need to find someone. What else can you do? If I do manage to catch another Sadita, that would be a very rare occurrence, in fact. An ordinary Thamaturge wouldn't even try it more than once. Only a few have multiple Salutars. Why? Some have lost their lives trying, others their senses. I was close to madness. I lost my sense of reality. I didn't know what was true. But I know I can do it. I'm almost a hundred percent sure. Isn't this exactly the sort of thinking that caused your problems that led you to me? That doesn't matter anymore. Then what's changed? This time, I've got you with me. Why did you want to come here with me? I have never gotten to know a Thaumaturge so closely. I'd like to learn as much as possible about your abilities. I need to look around this place a little more. I won't stop you. This house was always full of fear, and its owner was still alive when the house caught fire. Someone wanted to kill him. The fire only covered up the crime. The mother gave birth to the flaw that you attached to, didn't it? I'll find you when I track down the murderer. I know who owns this doll. Maybe I should give him back to her. She ought to know more about what happened here. Victor! I hope you've got what you want now, Thaumaturge. Because I think it's time to get out of here. Why the hurry, father? We're the Tsar's men. How about the donation for the Tsar's army? There are no Russian outposts here. I think this is the guy with the nice boots. You're the guy who trashed our comrades? This doesn't look like a fair fight. That's why we're giving you a chance. Make a donation and we'll disperse in peace. I didn't say the advantage was on your side. Salutors also help you in a fight? Can you manipulate people and cast these demons into their minds? Generally speaking, yes. Are you sure you're right, sir? Call me Grigori. Let's head back. 
I have to visit someone in the village who can tell me more about what happened here. Now I know that woman's trace. Vesna and her husband both left traces of themselves at the Vasili's burned out farmstead. Lucas sincerely loves his wife. You think he loves her strongly enough to kill for her? You're right. It'd be better to ask Vesna about that. I wanted to talk. Ma'am, please open the door. Please go. We didn't invite any guests over. Please open the door. I'd like to have a chat about your husband. You'd better not be here when he gets back. He's not as talkative or polite as I am. I know you're scared, but please, just open the door a crack and let me ask one quick question. What do you want? I think I've got something of yours. I found it by your father's burned-out farmhouse. You've imprinted your fear onto it. I know because I'm a thaumaturge. I want to help. What do you want to know? Where can I find your husband? In the clearing, by the forest. He's chopping wood with the others. Thank you. Get that thing out of here. Thaumaturgy never fails me. There is something here. Over my dead body. I reject this verdict. Well, I expected as much, and he wanted to come see you himself. He was first to judge. I said what I said, and I won't change my mind. Go away, you're attracting gawkers. Not gawkers, a witness. And let him listen. He'll see it fairly. Sir, this liar and thief here stole a memento of my mother. And this witch says I'm supposed to hand my goose over to him too? Because you strangled mine. And what do I care about some trinkets your mother left you? Because we already know you strangled the goose, but you still haven't proved that Bogdan stole your pendant. Where is the justice here? Why don't you relax and listen to the words of a wise woman? Well, all in all, it's... I'm sorry, Bogdan. Come inside, and tell me what you're doing here. Thaumaturgy never fails me. There is something here. Here. 
The villagers seem to have a certain respect for you, ma'am, so I wanted to ask your help with something. I'm not getting any younger, boy. Talk before I drop dead. You cursed him, didn't you? Vesna's father. You put some hex on him, right? A spell. I help people, yes. Vesna had a problem with her father, and believes in curses, spells, and hexes. Is that all? Because, like I said, I don't want to waste time and die here gabbing with you. A lot of people benefit from your wisdom. They're superstitious and timid, as far as I've been able to figure out. Easy to control, right? Pot calling kettle. That, my boy, that you can ask that charlatan with fancy dress and beard. Who takes advantage of who here? Bah! The people here are believers, of course. But the spirit in the village is real, too. Is this spirit you're talking about, not a person? I heard it howling. That's nothing human. One evil spirit here persecutes people, and you can hear it now and then, sometimes. Tragedies attract it, and impure thoughts. We here call it a Bukovac. But other places probably call it other things. An evil spirit's an evil spirit. It torments people and turns their weaknesses against them. And what if I told you I could get rid of it? I'd say I'll believe it when I see it. And I'd ask, how else can I help you? And that tragedy at the Elder's farm, did it affect people badly? Some less, others more. He was like an icon to some folk here. But I found out he could be heavy-handed. He was a drinker and a beater. So, some folk here don't miss him one bit. Have you got many more nosy questions? Vesna came here for help, didn't she? Vasily drank and beat her, and no one did anything about it. So you put that curse of yours on him. I even went to talk to him. How did you know that? I am a Thaumaturge. You people's magic. That's something I've got no faith in. Go on. For me giving Vasily a piece of my mind, he took it out on Vesna. And then her husband walked in and killed Vasily, and he's the one my salutor latched onto. As for the second thing, could be. But it wasn't Luca that killed Vasily. It was Vesna. Are you sure? I was there. And until now, only two people knew what happened there. Vesna and me. Don't be scared. I'll do my best to help you. Then I think we have to talk to Vesna. Please, open up. There's no need to be afraid. Just open the door. You're gonna wear yourself out banging a door like that. Can't you see nobody there? I'm looking for Vesna. I have to speak to her. Am I stopping you? Nobody there. I'm sure she went to see the hubby at work. Go bother them in the clearing instead of pounding on an empty house door. Thank you. Again. This time, it's a matter of life and death. 
How is your search going? Almost finished. I know who's attracting the Bukavach. Can you reveal that secret? It's Vesna. Do you still want to catch that Salutor? Yes, absolutely. Despite the risk? I hope I can persuade you to come with me. That's an enormous favor you're asking me. I hope you'll be able to return it. I, I give my word. Not much to think about here. If we can help Vesna, then get this nag quick to clearing like Mr. Shulsky asks. Vesna, child. We have to talk. I'm not here to fight. You shouldn't have threatened my wife. I know what you did. You don't know what you're saying. On the contrary, she's the one who brought the Bukovach here. She killed Vasily. When the wise woman's spell didn't have an effect, you decided to finish him off yourself, didn't you? You're the one who killed your father. And I'd do it again if I could. Get out of here! Here you are, Bukama. Vesna's flaw is mine, and you're mine. Crazy again, you blind fool. A little faith, Thaumaturge. Focus on what's true. My voice is true. I am the truth, you see. Look. How do you feel? Are you alright? Well, I don't think I'm hallucinating, but that means I'm currently facing a crowd of furious lumberjacks with axes, so 
I'd say I've been better. What? What? I'm telling the truth. I'd do it again. None of you understand anything. It's because of this magician. It's his fault. The magician didn't kill Vasily. He didn't bring the evil here. You're a witch! To the stake with her! To the stake! Then kill me too. I was there. I saw everything. Vasily, Bach. You're a big man now. But when he was beating Vesna for years, no one lifted a finger. Bah. Now you're also brave against her. Go home, pray better, and leave her alone. Excuse me, sir. Do you happen to know when the train arrives? The postmaster said it's usually no more than an hour late, so it should be here any moment. I got a tougher question for you. Uh, pardon? Will this train get me close to Albuquerque? I'm afraid that's an ocean away, and even to the ocean you've got a ways to go. Thank you. Ever since I took a wrong turn at Albuquerque, I can't get my bearings. The things I've seen, sir. Places I've been. I just can't get to Albuquerque. I wanted to send two telegrams, one to Warsaw and one to Paris. Mr. Shulsky, I was meant to send for you when the driver came to get the mail. My condolences about your father. Do you still want to send something? You come to say goodbye to me? More like to share my fear. Your condition yesterday, after the fight with that Bukovac, it troubled me. I don't think my treatments are having a long-lasting effect. And you don't look the best. Do you feel all right? I've just heard that my father is dead. My condolences. After your treatment, when I was hallucinating, I saw him. I heard his voice for the first time in years. I'm sure it was him. A strange feeling. Maybe he came to say goodbye. Maybe it was his last chance to speak to you. A prophecy. I hope not. What do you intend to do now? I have to bury my father in Warsaw. Hmm. What about you? Thanks to you. I don't think I have anything else to do here. I had a little time to think about what I saw in your mind. Tell me, Victor. Have you ever seen a human skull cracked open on the cobblestones? Your question sounded like a threat. Because it is. For all of us. I have. The skull of Franz Ferdinand himself. With his brain spilling out onto the sidewalk. I also saw the white steps in Odessa running with blood. A battlefield blanketed in lethal fog. With faceless beings emerging from it. This hasn't happened yet. But I saw it as clearly as I see you now. Thanks to you, I know that I can stop it. I know that I am part of history, and I can change it. Even at the cost of scorn, contempt, or my life. 
You promised me a favor, so Warsaw sounds perfect. Warszawa! Warszaw! Warsaw! Last stop, Warsaw. Time to wake up. It's clouding over. The weather is like my mood. Aside from the circumstances of the funeral bringing you back, you hadn't thought of ever returning here? I hate this city. It always makes me think of the stench of vodka, sweat, and urine. Corruption, poverty, and trust me, no justice but street justice. I'm sure something must have changed since you left. But probably not for the better. What about the people? Those close to you? You'll never miss them? I definitely didn't expect I'd be coming to my father's funeral so early. I've noticed you two had certain differences in your views on life. Yes, especially on my life. But admittedly, that's not a very exciting discovery. Is that all you've learned about me on our journey? You drool in your sleep. Any thinking there about Warsaw? Workers are striking. They want to take advantage of the Tsar's visit to Orso. The protests are being violently suppressed. Last week, around a dozen people were killed. Polish Socialist Party militants attacked a train. They stole money, bonds, and explosive materials. They're also suspected of robbing a transport of... Dutch bombing? The Socialists in Warsaw must look pretty sharp then. Further along, we've got murders, muggings, and poverty. The newspapers feed on sensation. Remember that in darkness, even a small spark can be seen clearly. Even I can feel hope from all the people riding with us. Can't you? Even without my powers, I can tell that hope is bringing people here from all three petitions. Miners, steelworkers, governesses, maids, speculators, thieves. I've gotten to read a few of our fellow passengers' possessions, and I know that hope can have many faces. Will you share that knowledge with me? There's a terrified woman riding with us. She's either running away or in hiding. I think that gentleman is smuggling something, because excitement is all mixed up with guilt inside him. And this dandy, he's going whoring. If there's something I've learned in life, Victor, it's never to neglect the whores. Warsaw, end of the line! Welcome to Warsaw! I think the time's come to ask where you plan to stay. I'll let you know when I come up with something.
people unite, empires fall. Why such a crowd? The circus has come to town. These are troubled times. Brothers turn against brothers. Russia has had enough bloodshed. The violence must stop. When socialists attempt to divide Russia and her subject nations, to dent the sword that smote the enemy at Grunwald, this demands my decisive action. Thus, by my grace, I hereby appoint as Governor General of Warsaw... Georgi Antonovich Skawon. A butcher. Not a popular guy, I presume. I see you ain't from here. Swine keeps a photo album of all the folks he's had shot at the Citadel. Before and after execution. Well, so, the time for leniency and indulgence is over. From the moment this office is bestowed on me, no forces hostile to the subjects of Greater Russia will have any further right to exist. Um, whether it be brutal socialist subversives, communists, Jews, or other satanic provocators. He sure knows how to unite a crowd. Pardon me, are you Polish? Yes, I feel Polish. My name's Viktor. Wanda. This is Russia here. Like it or not. Warszawa! Premia terrora! Zakonjos! Idi na chuj! My first decision as Governor General of Warsaw... Arrestować. Great heroes in their sense of timing. Of course, now they're the first ones in the fight. Samo bladanie, Polyaki. We won that rebel. The Loudmouth. Damn. What happened? Be a gentleman. Please kneel and tie my shoe. I didn't dare suggest it myself. you a tiny favor. The Russians can't find out about this. 
The military is just looking for an excuse to suppress the crowd, and these workers are dreaming of thrashing a Russian gendarme. Either one of you confesses to disturbing the peace, or of CX Zabirai. We'll take you all in. You can't handle all of us. Can you get us out of here? I think I'm open to any kind of suggestion. With a book like that, I'd find out what would convince one of these bastards to let us go. Or I'd take on that self-appointed leader of the proletariat. Interesting strategy. Who are you, really? A damsel in distress. Those don't usually hide ammunition in their stockings. Can I explain it to you another time? I'm going to take a look around. Do you think it's a good idea to stir people up and send them to face bullets and bayonets? What do you want then? My whole life on my knees? Kissing Ruski's ass? Do you realize blood is about to be spilled? And that it might be mine? Fuck off! Pardon me, gentlemen. The crowd has received the order. For now, zero response. We'll give them a moment. Arrest them all, book them, interrogate them. Gospody will be home in November. Gentlemen, please forgive me. Maybe there's a faster way to get this situation resolved. Back off, Poliak, or we'll start shooting. Paniatno, Scrum, Dovai. Do start it now. Should we go in and capture the worker who's mouthing off and let Deras go? Da, Sergeant. We can use anyone as an example. Shagom, march! Goodbye. You're welcome. I wanted to thank you at our next meeting. We could use someone like you. We? Meaning the people you were carrying ammunition for and who got you Dutch pomade for your hair? You haven't just got pretty eyes. You know how to use them. Maybe you'll find time one day for some jam donuts at Burke Rotblitz's? Excuse me, what's going on here? They're burying Satan in sacred ground. Some of those assembled believe it to be sacrilege. Konstantia Shabowska, the Warsaw Courier. What is your opinion, considering the book at your side? He's a tempermancer. Don't let him through. Please, quote me. That's true. The man being laid to rest was, in fact, Satan incarnate. Is that so? And now, if you'll excuse me. No, you can't go any further. 
Good manners are a waste of time. Get that heretic with fire and sword! Enchanting! Spectacular! You with a scowl and a puffed out chest, and them dropping like flies in the blink of an eye? Collapsing on their own, becoming delirious? Extraordinary. Can we meet for an interview? Thank you, but I'm already late. I'm sure you don't remember me. My name's Hayat, Mordechai Hayat. I wanted to offer my condolences. Thank you. Please, forgive my prying. I know Mr. Shulsky took nitroglycerin for his heart, but how did he pass away? Was that his cause of death? His heart? Why are you so interested in my father's cause of death? I'm sorry. I shouldn't have. I'm sorry. I'll leave you alone. I'm sure you want to bid farewell to your father. I knew you'd turn up. I wouldn't miss this for the world. Stasha loved you in his own way. You look well. Ligia said you found some quack healer. Yes, sir. Uh, thank, thank you. You don't recognize me, do you? But do you remember who taught you how to shoot starlings? Uncle Voronin, I'm, I'm sorry. Don't worry. I probably wouldn't recognize myself anymore. Go, look in on your sister. She's worried. We'll talk at home. Sister? Victor. I'm so glad you came. 
I wasn't sure if my telegram had reached you. I'm glad to. How are you holding up? All this caught me off guard, but... For now, I don't have time to think things through calmly. Have you written to Mother? Yes, but... What can you expect? You know what Nadia is like. It was never her style to show up for family events like this. It's getting late. And we've still got the reading of Papa's will ahead of us at home. And I'll leave you two alone. I suppose you've got your own matters to clear up. Fine, let's get this over with. So, it was me who got it right in the end. Back then, on the train platform, was the last time we saw one another. Fifteen years ago. After brief suffering, fell asleep in the Lord. Brief? I hope not. Did you write this yourself? A tyrant, bigot, and liar, mistakenly absorbed, died after suffering all too briefly. That's better, and definitely closer to the truth. The day you died, you visited me in my dreams. I was a child when you hounded me out of here, and I remember you as you were back then. But in my dream you looked older. You gave me hell as usual. You didn't believe I'd succeed. You were wrong. I've come back with two saliters. I'm sorry there are so many things I didn't get to say to your face. All those years, I said them over and over to myself in my head. How you were never able to admit a mistake. You never sought blame in yourself. Someone else was always guilty. Never you. Mother, because she wanted something for herself in life. Ligia, because she wasn't born a boy. Me, because I was born a Thaumaturge, but I didn't want to live following your principles. And now... <sighs> Farewell, father. Am I intruding? Have you been eavesdropping like that for long? <laughs> All my life, I came to pay my respects to the dead. Stanislav and I were acquainted. You might say I knew everything about your father. Mr. Viktor Shulsky, isn't it? Your absence from Warsaw has happily come to an end, I hope. I haven't had time to think about it. I understand. I hope you'll find some reason to stay here a little longer. Again, my condolences. I didn't catch your name. My name's Konechkin. Ivan Konechkin. Goodbye. Such interesting friends you had. <sighs> I, I guess I'm more tired than I thought.
We can go. The hardest thing was getting the lid of the urn. The scattering I could handle. You can play the clown, but I know how much this has cost you. I'm glad you went. Love at a funeral? Eros postmortem? Is it suitable for a young lady in mourning to fraternize with bachelors? Constantia Shabowska, the Warsaw Courier. Could I ask for a brief comment? Faina. Thank you. And you, sir? We're twins, my dear lady. The Shulskis reunited. You don't look like a horrid cripple. Why did you leave Warsaw so quickly? Don't tell her anything. She'll write whatever she wants anyway. And we'd better get going. I can sort it out, but it might cause you some trouble. It's not worth getting your hands dirty over. Get out of here! Or I might decide you're attacking an Imperial official. And you'll wake up tomorrow in the Citadel. Are you threatening me, Judge? I'm actually spurring you from him. Would you rather try your luck with a Taumaturg? Come on, children. I'm sure my Pietia is already waiting for us at home. I'd love to see my cousin. Are you coming with us? Thanks. Get in. I'm sure the lawyer is already waiting for us. Miss, your guests have arrived. The lawyer's upstairs too, waiting. But try for jittery. Wonder if the tea I made him was too strong. Thank you, Grazina, dear. Let the guests wait. First, I want to take care of the will. I'll just wet my whistle and join you all upstairs. Make sure Uncle makes it upstairs sober. And I'll suggest you don't dawdle either. Master Victor, good God! Half your face covered, but I could tell right away it was you. You look just like your father in his youth. Completely his spitting image. Should I make you some cocoa, Master? It would warm you up a little. Make an extra creamy one for Ligia. Oh, I won't skimp on her. Now, your sister's putting a brave face on all this, but she's really having a hard time. It's lovely to see you again. But that's enough jabber for now. I've got the guests and the cocoa, and I've got to whip up some food for you all later. We'll talk soon. I don't want to put my foot in my mouth again. I already failed to recognize someone once today, but you look familiar. Well, I should think so. I was the victim of one of your starling hunts. Voronins must not be very memorable, cousin. Pietia! <laughs> Forgive me, and for shooting you as well. Ha! Huh. How are you doing? Just some heart problems, not a subject for today. I'm sorry about Uncle Stanislav. Forgive me for not coming to the funeral. I can't bear cemeteries. We'll have to meet up again. Goodbye. you here. I thought I'd have to drink alone. 
So many goodies laid out for the guests. Having trouble picking something for yourself, Judge? But this was Stasios. It was special. Amber liqueur with quinces. I think you mean quince liqueur with amber, right? If it's not here, I'm sure it's in the basement. But I won't grope around down there in the dark now. I've got my hands full. Now, I don't want to trouble you either. Victor, could you track down a little bottle for your uncle? I suppose I'm obligated to accept this mission. <laughs> Good lad. A nephew like you is a treasure. How did it go? Mission accomplished? I think this is the one Uncle wanted. Yes. This is our little funeral battle. We would meet in Stasha's study after every funeral we went to, and raised a toast to the dead. And recently, we've been seeing one another more and more at such events. More and more. But this time, even he has left me. So? To an easy death, as Stasio and I used to say. <laughs> How did he die? Hasn't Ligia told you? I haven't even had the chance to ask. He didn't suffer, but such images in the memory are better saved for later. I'd prefer to remember him as he was alive. What then? Am I drinking alone? I suppose there's no reason to bear grudges or be angry, is there? Pustachio? To an easy death. Familiar faces keep vanishing from my life. Stasio and my Helena before him. I miss my little darling. I miss them both. Well, obligation fulfilled. Shall we get to the reading of the will? At the funeral, there was this sad Jewish fellow, Mordechai Hayat. Do you know him, uncle? He worked for Stanislav, but that was a long time ago. I don't know him more than that. So, shall we collect our inheritance? Yes, let's find out what my father hasn't left me. Let's begin if everyone is ready. Would you all please take a seat? Ladies and gentlemen, by the power of my office vested in me by the grace of His Imperial Majesty, the Emperor of All Russia, I hereby testify Mr. Shulsky's last will and testament were prepared several years ago in the presence of Zaslav Fedorov, Esquire, that is, myself. My last will and testament recorded in the year of our Lord, 1888. In the name of the Holy Trinity, Amen. Therefore, my first irrevocable wish is to appoint as executrix of this will my daughter, Ligia Schulska. Immediately after my death, an inventory shall be conducted in full accordance with the law. 
After completing their inventory, all my personal movables will be sold at public auction. And let the funds raised thereby be donated on the anniversary of my death to the beggars near the cemetery. The administration of the remainder of my fortune I leave, without restriction, to the person of my daughter, Ligia. I'm not even getting a teaspoon. All movables and immovables relating to the family enterprise I entrust to the care and administration of my daughter. I do not prescribe a method of administering them. I merely offer her one piece of advice. I wish that the business should be conducted with modesty, prudence and honesty, as I have conducted it my whole life. A joker to the very end. <laughs> To my brother-in-law and oldest friend, Alexander Voronin, I wish to leave the following. My collection of muskets and two revolvers dating to the uprising in memory of our first meeting. Stasio, I will have plenty to do in my retirement. Enjoy your retirement. Now, Mr. Fedorov, what did my father leave my mother? Hmm? Victor, be serious. Nothing. There is a special item reflecting the absolute lack of any bequest to my former spouse, Nadia Fyodorovna Voronina. I would also like to come to the aid of my only son, Victor Shulsky by entrusting him with the use of my personal black grimoire, in the hope that he will be able to make good use of it. This is my last will and testament. Carry it out solemnly, though you may have found it burdensome. However, this last bequest poses a certain problem. Yes, it certainly does. And what is that, may I ask? I am not in possession of this grimoire. The late Mr. Shulsky used it up until his death. Yet no one left it with me after his passing. Meaning it's disappeared? Did father have his grimoire on him at the time of his death? It was only because of the grimoire that we could identify him at all. What actually happened? How did he die? A building collapsed on top of him. I don't know any other way of putting it. A building? It collapsed on top of him? How? How did this happen? It was a day like any other. Papa had gone for his habitual walk. Every Tuesday and Thursday, he'd take a stroll to get some space, as he put it. When he didn't come back for a long time, I got the bad feeling something had happened. Then... We rode there together. An entire wall of a tenement had collapsed. There were three victims, including Stasio, who had the bad luck to simply be walking by. To see him there in that condition, it's beyond description. The grimoire. Could someone have taken it? Perhaps. In all that confusion? But why would anyone want Papa's grimoire? An ordinary person won't use it. Would the tarmator just happen to be passing by? Father had all his knowledge in there. But I don't know if it would be useful to someone other than him. I don't even know why he left it to me. I'm sure Stasio had a reason. Where did it happen? Where was this building? The southern part of Shudmieście, not far from the police station. Anyway, you can miss it. Of all the possibilities, this was the death that fate prepared for him. I foresaw a slightly more pleasant end for him myself. I doubt even he deserved such a horrible death.
Those might be the kindest words you've ever said on the subject of a father. How typical of a sort of person to keep a portrait in his study of a family that was only a family on canvas. Not long after the painting was done, he got divorced, ruined in Yejitsas, and kicked out his son. But there the portrait hangs, as if family meant anything at all. I don't know what exactly happened with Abaulitsa, but I know that Papa felt guilty. You don't want to forgive him even now that he's gone? The dead need no forgiving. And as for forgetting, I don't know how. It's just a shame about the Grimoire. What do you intend to do? And where are Father's things at the moment? You're standing at the very center of his kingdom. Not everything has been sorted through yet, but you go right ahead. And the store? I should check the two. I've started stock taking there to distract myself, and I don't want you to go in there before I've finished. As you wish. I think we have to look for the answer in the place where it happened. With your sight, you can make out more in those ruins than I, or Uncle, or Detective could. This is a good lead, but is it the only one? Father evidently knew a certain Ivan Konechkin. Have you heard anything about him? Konechkin? No, doesn't ring a bell. All sorts of people came to Papa's store. That doesn't mean every one of them might know something about the Grimoire. That's true. You've got your work cut out for you. And Mordechai Chayat. Could that be a lead? I don't think so. He worked with father, but he left more than a year ago. I don't know why. He was an assistant at our, well, my store. Do you know where I might find him? Sadly, no. Do you have any other ideas? Now at least I can see how little I know. Maybe these scraps of information will lead me somewhere. Well... Now that we know what's got to be figured out, forgive me, my darlings. I'm going to give my old bones a rest. I'll see you out. Goodbye, Uncle. And, uh, Ligia. I'm sorry it happened this way. That I wasn't close by. The most important thing is you're here now. How do you find our old stomping ground? Yes, I'm not too fond of this place either. This is where I had my last conversation with my father, just before I left. If you can call it a conversation. Can you see my dreams? Nightmares, actually. Ever since I decided to come back, I keep reliving the same memory. The Lone Shark incident. I've been seeing his death more and more lately. I wonder if his shop is still there. Perhaps we should go there and check.
Hello? I talk here? Do you hear me now? Victor? Victor, are you there? Grigori? Yes. Victor, uh, where are you? On the other end of the line, at home, where the telephone rang. <laughs> Incredible. Has something happened? To me? No. I am telecommunicating with you to say I found lodgings here in Warsaw. If you need me, I'm by the cemetery. Uh, what number is it? Yes, yes. Seven Povaskovska Street. Uh, number seven by cemetery. Povaskovska. I'm glad. It's good to hear your voice. <laughs> it's good to hear you as well. Uh, goodbye. I, I want to end now. What do I... Uh, like this? Wonderful device. Remarkable. Hello? Oh, and now? Master Victor, let me guess, have you come for some hot cocoa? Yes, a cup of cocoa would do me good. Help yourself. The pot is in the salon, along with some of your favorite cookies. It's been an age since we've seen one another. I'm glad you're back. Mistress Ligia is really struggling with everything. And so, the great Stanisław Szulski is dead, crashed by a building. Can't say I'd wish a death like that on anybody. An awful death. Sheer cruelty. Mr. Szulski didn't deserve it. Now all we can do is think back on what a wonderful man he was. That won't take long. So, this death... What do you make of it, Grzymka? I'll tell you in confidence, Master Shulski. Now, I'm a simple woman, but something about your father's death doesn't sit right with me. How do you mean, Grzymka? Don't you suspect some impure powers had a hand in it? Do you mean it could have something to do with thaumaturgy? That, I don't know. Look at us jabbering while there are potatoes not peeled. Forgive me, Master. Ligia won't open up to me, but how is she doing? She's having a rough time, the poor dear. Her heart is heavy, though she doesn't show it, but she's strong. She keeps her chin up and doesn't give in. And it's good she's got you to help now, Master. Only she started smoking. Like a chimney. She takes after her father. No question about it. Another time, Grzynka. I'll get out of your way. Always ample work. But I can always snatch a moment for a chit-chat with you, Master. Have you found anything yet about the grimoire? Is there any way I can help? What's next for you? You're in charge here now. Have you got some kind of grand scheme? A grand scheme? Well, for now, I'm just trying to keep my head above water. Certain customers are unconvinced that a woman can handle running a business. What's worse, a woman without powers. You know what I mean. A thaumaturge at my side would shut them all up. After all, it's your heritage too. 
I don't know anything about running a company, but if I can help in any way, you can count on me. Thank you. That means a lot to me. I trust the smoke doesn't bother you. You used to detest the smell of tobacco. You'd hold your breath going into Father's study. That's true, but when I'd stay here, alone with Papa, and somehow over the years I got used to it. I don't know when I started copying him even. Daddy's girl. You were always closer to him. That's not true. I was just less rebellious than you, his thaumaturge son. Now come on, what else is on your mind? The trousers are an original style. Until now, I'd only seen women in trousers in the East. First of all, they're practical. It's the 20th century. It's high time we started dressing comfortably. You've always been brave, never afraid of anything or anybody. Like when Mother almost had a fit because you dumped my best tie in hot cocoa. I didn't care that she was angry. I wanted to get you back for not wanting to play with me. Because you were being too annoying. You meant to say brave. By the way, Grajana still makes cocoa every evening. You can conjure up the flavor of childhood if you want. Is there anything else you want to talk about? In Father's study, I found a trace of a woman that I couldn't identify. Probably Svetlana Rumyantseva. Who is she? And what does Father have to do with her? Svetlana is a Russian aristocrat who travels with the Romanov's court. I can only tell you she was a customer of Father's. A customer? If you don't want to say, then don't. Where can I find her? When she's in town, she stays at the Imperial Hotel. She might know something that will help me find the grimoire. Not so fast. To get in, you're going to need me and my connections. Svetlana is famous for her soirees where she hosts the Creme de la Creme of Warsaw. We could go together. How about you track down some evening clothes and I'll sort out the invitation? And I won't take no for an answer. Sadly, you never give me a chance. Unfortunately, everything in my wardrobe is antediluvian. I need a tailor. There's a shop at 11 Pruzna Street that's fairly decent and quick. We also have barbers in Warsaw in case you want to do something about whatever you have growing on your head and face. Excuse me. Damn it. I forgot to turn the key. Sorry, what? You tell me. What is it? I couldn't help noticing you're struggling for inspiration. You've got a keen eye. The book makes it easier? I have to guess what everyone has in their mind. Is there any way I can help? I want to know what people look for in fashion these days. Back in the day, all you needed was two pad legs and a space for your Johnson. I don't know what else there is to it. If you tell me that, I'll be grateful. I'll sue you anything you want in return. Let me sharpen my senses. 
I need some evening wear, quick. Good proportions. Thank you. Alterations won't take long. Your name and address, sir? Viktor Shulski, 9 Green Square. I'll send a messenger when I'm done. And Mr. Shulski, if you'll allow me a moment of candor, as it often seems no one dares to address you with it. Sorry, what? Go and find yourself a barber in Povonsky. You look like a troglodyte. Now, I'd like to go to my business. I won't bother you. All right. Come in. Please, set my hair to rights. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. I don't usually talk to clients. Do you like it? I can't help noticing that you're the most tight-lipped barber I've been to. And even you admit that you rarely talk to clients. Why is that? When I prepare them for their final journey, it's hard to ask for their opinion. So you style the deceased too? Mostly. They still need to look good. After all, you only get a funeral once in your lifetime. So, what do you think? Do you like it? Yes, you're talented. Years of practice. My clients are always satisfied. Am I a magician or what? Death did not catch my father by surprise. 
It seems as if he had been expecting it, just not at that moment. He was practically annoyed about it. There was something he had wanted to finish. And this building, it couldn't have just fallen down like that right as he was going by. Hey, Suski! What? Chicken butt. Tie him up. There you go. Tighter. We took his book. Well done. All right. Let's wake the asshole up. Wakey, wakey. What? What's... Well, come on, Sleeping Beauty. I haven't got all day. Now, let me get a good look at you. You look rough, fancy boy. This isn't what I was expecting. Well, what did you expect? That after years of hanging out in Parisian salons, you'd come back handsome and spruced up. How do you know about Paris? Nothing stays secret from Anyejits, right? Shit. Just read out my birth certificate, why don't you? Abaoritsi Nyejits. Long time no see, Shursky. What kind of a sick idea is this? Kidnapping me? It's a joke! You don't find it funny? No. What does it feel like to have your life depend on me? Not the best. Listen, I understand you hold some resentment within yourself over what happened, but I can't change the past. Well, yes. But shit! You told me to wait for help and instead the boys in blue showed up and you washed your hands of it and left my pop to rot in prison. At least admit that you acted like a dick. I admit that it was a shitty move on my father's part. Your father? Well, look at this weasel. Straight to whitewashing the past. Like father, like son, eh? My father's karma came back to bite him. A horrible death in return for the kind of man he was. I'm sure you heard. Well, admittedly, nothing's but a spring in my step in a long while, like hearing that Shulsky met his end as sludge on the sidewalk. They say the devil doesn't take the wicked, but for your old man, he made an exception. Now that he's dead, let's put the past behind us. There'd be no reason to talk if you hadn't pinched Papa's gut back then. Victor, it kills me that we pulled the trigger together. Together. What the fuck? Boss, it's the Cossacks again. Come here, coward! Looks like you've got a chance for redemption. Let's show these dickheads you don't mess with the shifts. I'll take a look around. You guys again. You shitheads better have a good excuse, because I was right in the middle of an incredibly important meeting. It was fate that decided. We flipped a coin, and it turns out that today, we're practicing our boxing on you. Some... Feathers? A bee? I know you. You're... I can't remember now. Fucked up. But today, you'll regret it. Today, I've got the Demon Master on my side. Show these cretins, Victor.
<laughs> you never let me down. This is the best way to start an evening, at Nyejit's bar. If we're to have fun, let's do it right. A round for everyone. <laughs> Old friendships never die, right? Here, Polish, pure, the mother of all libations. Enjoy it! Who knows what piss you've been drinking abroad. So, are we quits? I helped you out. Now, can we forget all that ancient history? Don't be so sly, Victor. We're not squared up yet. That burns nicely. My knuckles are itching. Let's go somewhere and pick a fight. Good riddance. Well, what do you say, Victor? Returning to the subject of the past. Fuck the past. We're in the here and now. Let's enjoy the moment. Cheers. You don't want to talk about it? I thought that was why you kidnapped me. I've changed my mind already. You better tell me what you're poking around my bar for. It seems to me there's work for me to do at your bar. No shit! I'll give you a hand. Not like that. Thaumaturgical work. It seems to me there's a salutar here. What the fuck? Who brought a demon into my joint? I'll give him... Although, hang on now. A demon is a good publicity. Hey, everybody! From this day forth, the London bar will be known as The Demon's Den! Go and tell everybody that here is the only place you can do shots in the Devil's Company. Listen, you keep on thinking about how you can develop your business. And I'm going to take a look around and come right back. Go! I'm going to wet my whistle and see how you do your hocus pocus. If you need something, I'm here and I'll give you a hand. giant bird must enjoy it, and I'm sure it also stirs up the chaos. Victor, time for penalty drinks. Feathers, a beak, those eyes. Who are you? I can't focus. Don't make me come over there! Do I know someone with mood swings, a tendency for bravado, and a weakness for booze? Have you nosed around my humble little hole in the wall? What's the word? Tell me something more about these Cossacks. They roam around different bars picking fights as soon as they get leave from the Citadel. Sometimes we pummel each other and things continue as usual. Well, well. How did you get your hands on all this? I worked my ass off for years. I found myself in shitty positions. Sometimes I had to make people disappear. Pop wouldn't have been proud of me. 
Maybe it's a good thing he didn't live to see it. But then I'd have to kill you. What's stopping you? You had me tied up in a chair. Well, I sure did. Maybe the thought even crossed my mind. But I decided to give you a chance. Witness the kindness within my heart. Tell me, what else is going on? I've had a look around and something's caught my attention. I think they might have something to do with the Saluta. Well then, shoot! A bucket of dirty water and a blood-soaked rag. Whose blood is this? As if I remember everybody who's bled on the floor here. Every day we've got to clean up after somebody. Is that everything, or have you found anything else? Did anybody die from this bullet that got stuck in the post? Bullets fly every which way here. That's the atmosphere. Was someone killed? Probably, but that's not very unusual. Look how helpful I am. Keep going. Who smashed your window? How long it's been? Uh, two days, I think. This one Russian bigwig was really fucking irritating me, so I politely asked him to leave. What else can I help you with? Tell me. I'm at your service. You like to go wild here, huh? Are you often the one who gets the old crazy ball rolling? You know I used to have a puppy. This little fluff ball was hanging out under the bar. I have a heart, Victor. I have a big heart. Not like those morons over there. To Cossacks, a game without a corpse is no game at all. For me, knocking out teeth, breaking hands, I'll take it. A stiff spoils the mood a bit. That's my opinion. What happened to the puppy? He was called Romeo. He fell in love. One day he packed his bag and ran off with that bitch. I'm sure he uh, started a family. He's raising his puppies and reminiscing. My brave little guy. Uh, but what were we talking about? You get a lot of stiffs here then? Where my corpse here lieth down. Something, something looketh around. What do you call a lot? Three a month on average, I'd say. Danis, that Cossack with a dick where his head should be, pulled out his revolver one day and wanted to play Russian roulette. Only with his revolver. But fuck it. I'm not handing my head over so easily to a butcher like that. Well, then I'll ask you. Is he an idiot or what? I have to gather my thoughts. Go ahead, go ahead. I have to gather myself a little too. Lelek. What the hell did you say, Victor? You're out of your goddamn mind. The Salutor's name's Lelek. Well, yes, the beak, the feathers, the trill. He loves the smell of death, and he enjoys risk and foolishness, which he also fuels. So let's go get Lelek. Yeah, come on. Where about it is, Lelek could be as well. Maybe his floor is speaking for him. Whoever's with us is with us, and whoever's against us, fuck him. Come on, I'll show you places even the philosophers never dreamed of. Maybe your demon will be drinking vodka somewhere there, too. Take a deep breath. That's the smell of Warsaw nightlife. Smell it, Victor. Relish it. A bouquet of sweat, shit, and puke. And piss, thanks. But it's Warsaw's piss and puke, interwoven with the aroma of steadfastness and heroism. Come on, you'll see the true face of Abauritz and Niedzic. And maybe you'll even find what you're looking for here.
Welcome to my world. Meaning what? That they've got a guy tied up in the back here too, and they're about to threaten to drown him in the Vistula? I see the positive mood of the neighborhood has infected you. Wonderful. But you guessed wrong, friend. Here, well, magic happens here. Thought is transformed into word to penetrate the material and infuse the universe with tenderness. All right, let's drink, shall we? A double barrel each, please. People come here to tickle their palates with exquisite libations. Let's do a milk of 83. You're not messing around. After years of begging and eating scraps off aristocratic tables, I'm not messing around. You come here to get some fresh air away from the underworld? I come here so I don't forget who I am. A poet. So what's actually been going on with you over the last 15 years? My father ended up behind bars. And as for me... The streets took me in, taught me life. I roamed around, got odd jobs, and when I was hard up, I went begging. I've got a tough skin on me, Victor, but the embers of poetry still smolder in my heart. Well, in time, I gained a new family, my shivs. We were supposed to go to high school together, maybe to university after that. Everything would have gone differently, if only... We did the world a favor by fucking over that loan shark. One way or the other, Pop's debts would have landed me on the streets. If I hadn't told you about it, you wouldn't have hit on your brilliant idea. I'll sort him out with my salator, you kept saying. You were too unskilled at that magic business of yours, eh? A gun is reliable and evocative. I thought a thaumaturge kid wouldn't make as big an impression as a kid with a pistol. And all in all, you were right. It's just a shame we used the gun. I trusted my father to help us, but he only told me not to interfere. He swore he'd sort it out. All right, there's no need to waste your damn breath. He's gone, and we're here. You've always had a silver tongue. <laughs> Don't I know it? Add to that a despicable past, and you've got all the ingredients for a poet. Now why are we sitting here instead of at your bar? My lads, bless them. Set me up a poetry reading once, but they're simple folk. They don't understand this, poesy. They laughed when they should have cried. Cried when their hearts should have flooded with anger. I don't hold it against them. My bar trades on its reputation as a dive. That's how you make the most money. What is your plan? Would you rather the name Nyejits make people talk about the king of the underworld? Or a great poet? The poetic king of the underworld. Anyway, they already say that. The Shivs think of me as a bard, and the competition says so too. And since I've got them all by short hairs, they respect me. Even though they can't string two proper sentences together. I've got a gift, Victor. I can't complain about a lack of talent. Listen, I'm going to be honest with you. I think Lelek is attached to you. A demon following me around? Bullshit. There are a lot of indications. Your personality, the things you do, and stuff like that. I'd rather not have anyone sharing my head with me. Can you do something about it? There's only one way. I have to figure out your flaw, which means pushing you to the edge. But it's not going to be pleasant. Every day I balance on the edge. That doesn't scare me. Go ahead. I found your poem. Did you write it in your own blood or that of one of your victims? Victims? The hell are you talking about? Of course it was mine. I slice my veins open for art. That's how committed I am. 
More like desperate. No true poet needs to resort to gimmicks. He just needs ink, and the world will hear him. Shit. One more word, and I'll forget about our friendship. There's nothing to forget. Our friendship is just a figment of your sick imagination. Stab me in the heart. It'll hurt less. I... forgive me. I don't think that at all. I'll chalk it up to your devils. Maybe one of them perched on your shoulder for a second. The only good thing is that now I'm certain, Lelek follows someone else. You're just... the way you are. It couldn't be any other way. A demon pulling my strings? No way. So what? Should we continue our search? Oh, Victor, lad. How that we tickles me. Come on. Of course we're continuing. We have to find that little brat of yours. Give up, you piece of shit! Do you see what I see? I see two morons wrestling with a lamppost. How are you fellas doing? Who's winning? It's a colossus, looking down its nose. Arrogant piece of... I swear it called us sons of bitches. Well, that would piss anyone off. All in all, look at it this way, Amoritsa. It is a little stuck up. Well, that's true. If you look close enough at it, it could be enough to piss you off. That's what I said! You sure showed that Lampos what brave squaddies you are. It's leaning now, so you taught it a lesson. Do my eyes deceive me, or are you vandalizing city property? Papers, please. I think you must have a screw loose, gents. <laughs> Different rules apply in the bar district. No need to show your ID, Nienjits. We've already got a cell waiting for you. Well, I don't think so. Go ahead, Victor. Ugh. <sighs> 
Well, well. You sure gave that the Cossack treatment. And what? You guys were so worn out from fighting a Lampos that you didn't help? It was fun to watch. Nijits and the magician in action? It's a fine sight. Time to keep an eye out for Dennis. He was injured in the fight with the Colossus and got lost. I think. Maybe the Ataman ended up at the Lockstock. Where? The Lock, Stock and Barrel. This Ruski bar up the stairs here. Competition. <laughs> the night's still young. There's excitement ahead. Let's follow them. Since I haven't yet found Lelik, that could be just where he is. Private party tonight, no riffraff. Cheers, Ivan, my friend. Mr. Nyejits, well, I've got clear instructions. Don't be silly. It's a beautiful night out. Rare when we see stars over Warsaw. But now look. One, two. If you count them all, you'll know the extent of my gratitude. Well, all right, go on in. I'm fond of you, Mr. Nyejits. I'm just doing my job. You see? That's respect. This is what they call a private party? What is this, awake? Good thing we showed up. Double barrel for me. Actually, make that too. Look at her, all over him. I'd know how to make the most of being so popular. Oh, Nashtrug. Come sit with us. Did I hear you talking about Danis? Danis and babes. He talks a lot, makes a big fuss around himself, but when push comes to shove, he leaves them hanging. So them babes must like him. Yeah. Nothing for us to do except drink and enjoy one another's company. You seem thick as thieves. Have you known each other long? Since we were kids. We're all from the Don Host Oblast. Under Danis, we've traveled far and wide with the Russians. Danis is your commander? Da, Ataman. You know Danis pretty well, right? Yeah, what about it? I take a professional interest in guys like him. Yeah. You think I can ask you guys a couple of questions? Let's see what you're after, wizard. Danis had a fiancé, but she dumped him. How come? You know, he keeps his feelings to himself. But it hurt him. That's what I think. Maybe she got sick of waiting. She had her pick of men in the village. And is that what made Danny so devil may care? A broken heart? Sure. What would it be otherwise? Who is Pasha? 
Our body, from the same village as us, out past the Don River. We went through a lot together. Pasha's dead. Leave it at that. What actually happened to him? We all stick close together. But when you're drunk, you get some weird ideas. That damned Shashka of Pasha's was a spoil of war. One time, Danis and Pasha got tanked and started playing Russian roulette for it. So, Danis clearly won. But that little saber of Pasha's doesn't make him feel triumph, more like love and concern. He really looks after it. I've heard Danis likes playing Russian roulette. He's such a bonehead. He never thinks about the trouble he'll get himself into. You'd better watch your head when he's around. Who'd have thought that Danis was such a sensitive soul? Does he play the balalaika a lot? Lately, he's been singing either about the Grim Reaper and Hellfire or rolling in the hay. You can't keep up with him. He goes too heavy on the tearjerkers for my taste. Any more questions? You know what I think? You're not being straight with me. What? I think Pasha and Danis were more than comrades in arms and blood brothers. On top of that, I think that's why Danis' fiancé dumped him. People from your village kept giving her crap. The fuck are you talking about? They were blood brothers, that's all. You'd love to find a buddy like that, someone for better and for worse. Calm down, I can see your faithful friends. I'd better go take a drag of Warsaw Air. If you like breathing through a straight nose, don't try any funny business. Danis doesn't think about what he's doing, and he doesn't care about the consequences, as if it's all in the name of fun. He couldn't cope with his broken heart, so he started tumbling further and further into the depths of chaos. It seems like Pasha was more to him than just a comrade and close friend. His death hit Danis like a train. Since then, his life's been nothing but irrational behavior and risk-taking. He's thumbing his nose at death. I think I'll accept the challenge. Time to figure out his flaw and catch Lelek. I wonder if he'll play Russian roulette with me. Come on, don't make me back. I'll fix up your head for no extra fee. I'm in no hurry to go upstairs. I feel like a game. You up for one? Me? Forget it. I have gorgeous hands. Everyone says so. You're not gonna carve them up with that shank. What? You eavesdropping, magician? Lock, stock and barrel? Or the London bar? The demon's den! You're taking a fucking survey? Are you spying for Nijits? Sheer curiosity. I work for nobody. I'm the one in charge of... Devils, I know, I know. Get out of here. I can't stand the sight of you. I found something that belongs to you. A letter. Is... Hand that over. If you read it, you'll regret it. It's private. Easy now. I just wanted to talk. We don't have anything to talk about. Leave me alone. You're sitting there so quietly. How about a little game? You play Russian roulette here, lads? Or are you too soft? Ha! Think you're harder than me? I eat Russian roulette for breakfast. Let's play. Did someone say Russian roulette? Show us what a tough guy you are, pretty boy. Six chambers, one bullet. Ready to start? Wait, Victor. Let's play with mine. Yours will do too. 
It will be more interesting that way. Does this remind you of anything? My turn. It was nice knowing you guys. And you, Victor. If fate so ordains, we'll speak in hell. Well, four more. Ah! We're starting round two. Is that how it was with Pasha? Do you wonder if you're going to wipe the remains of my brain of your face? Shut your trap! What? You shit in your pants? Gods of chaos, watch over me. That's the end. We know what's waiting in the cylinder. You brave enough to cross even that final boundary? Enough, gentlemen. We were kidding around. Danis, there's nothing in there. I didn't load it. Pasha ran out of luck and lost his shashka, right? You're lying, Yejits. You're all lying. You think I'm scared of death? The sight of me makes the Grim Reaper quake in his boots. Well, go ahead. Watch carefully. <laughs> Is that lovely song for me? Don't stop. I'm enjoying listening.
Enough of losing. Rasputin will tame you. Bullets have no effect on me. The end will never come. What are you talking about, Dennis? Let's get to drinking. The night's still young. You don't understand. None of you. Leave me alone. I don't want to hear another word. Get out! Shut it, Selim. Or I'll find a loaded piece and shoot you dead. Give me a second. To get my thoughts together. I have to... Let yourself feel the pain that's consuming you. You need it. Pasha, I'm sorry. I haven't mourned you. Danis, pull yourself together. Come on! No, Selim, I have to. You too as well. Forgive me. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Don't say anything. No words are necessary. Seems to me we should drink a toast to the dead. Dennis, we are your brothers forever, till the day we die! Come on, let's leave these scoundrels alone. We've got stuff to talk about. What a poetic experience. I can feel it in my bones, as if I were part of something grand, you know? You carry an unloaded revolver? Anybody can pull a trigger. I use it to smash heads. And balls. But tell me, did you catch the little sprat? Yeah, I did. But it wasn't easy. It still isn't. Was it worth it? I don't know. At least now it won't be Lelek deciding Danis's fate. And that's always a good thing. Anything that lets you sleep at night, friend. Forget sleep. Now I need hypnosis. Thanks for today, about it. Oh no, hold on now. The night will end when I say so. Come here. What do I care? Lead the way. Well, yeah, I get that. At the end of the day, what heals the body and soul better than a double vodka, eh? Four. To us, to you, to vodka. <laughs> Show her your demon, Victor. <laughs> Just not on my shoes. Victor, Victor boy. Maybe you aren't at all such a prick as Sataniswaf was. <laughs> 99 bottles standing on the wall. Hey! <gasps> Well, hello, Sleeping Beauty. My head's about to explode. What the hell are we doing in front of my house? The front steps got the better of you. But, Victor, to hell with that. What a night we had. Admit it. If you're looking for fun, do it with Njejits. Well, I admit... It was quite, quite... Quite, schmite. It was spectacular. And we both know it. We'd better get away from here. 
If Ligia finds us. Ligia! And by what fault do your eyes burn red, hot, while your mouth is like honey? You trust over much in my virtue? I see you're looking after our good name, brother. Forgive me. It won't happen again. It won't. I'll make sure of that. I can assure you, my darling sister, that next time I'll make it all the way to the door. Can you make it home from here, or do you need a hand? But, but, those five rubles, remember? Five? What the hell do I owe you that much for? My dear friend, I can't answer that question in the company of a lady. Water whores aren't that expensive. You two got bilked. Victor? With each word, I find your sister more and more impressive. One way or another, I wouldn't like to have you as a creditor. If I needed a loan, it was because I'm broke. Then go fish around at home. A gold watch if Satanisuavs would come in handy. He doesn't care anymore. Satanisuav? Here. From now on, you can cover your own tabs. Maybe you'll even start paying for your own telegrams. And now, pardon me, but I have things to do in life. Once you've dragged yourself home, brother, I'd like a word with you. All right, don't worry about it now. We'll have a chance to meet up. Next time, you're buying. Next time? <laughs> so you think I'm done with you? One night like this is too little for us to be squared up. I know not why others stare, lest it's at our drinking fair. I need to see Rasputin. Sir? Please let me in. It's urgent. You can't just turn up like this. What will I tell sir and madam? Fear not. I'm here for Rasputin. I can sense he's in a drawing room. Intriguing. Is that him? In the flesh. Allow me to introduce you. My dear hostess, Aniela Narodzinska, and my dear friend, Viktor Shulsky. Your father had a beautiful funeral. Thank you. 
my dear. We finished for today. Now I'll find out what brings Victor to us. What brings you here? But you were the one who phoned. Very funny. You look like you've made yourself at home. Are you going to be staying on here for long? No, I'm afraid not. They're kind people, but I've experienced another vision. Though not fully terrifying, it is troubling. Will you tell me about it? Later. What brings you to me? Have you known them long? No, but Aniela and Lucian are my two good souls. They took me, an impoverished preacher, in under their roof. And I'll never forget that. Are you helping them too? I am a balm for Aniela's frazzled nerves. But enough of that. Tell me what you need. Why was she looking at me so oddly? What did you tell her about me? She's never seen a thaumaturge before. I only mentioned to her how we met. Can I help you at all? Actually, I don't feel great. Let's see what you've brought with you this time. Close your eyes and focus on my words. Concentrate on my voice. Relax and focus within yourself. Follow my voice inside yourself. Where is he? I don't see him, but I can sense. So that's how you want to play. That chirping of his is unbearable. Do you hear him? Good. That means you can locate him. Point him out to me. Focus on his song and show me where he's hiding. You have him. You look better. You slept a long time. Yes, it feels that way. What year is it? Still 1905. Yet time flows on inexorably. No, I won't bother you. We can talk next time. The Narazinski door is always open to you. Hello. Indeed. Fanciable. 
Not close. I would even say a solid eight, wouldn't you? I don't know. We'll see when he turns around. Eight it is. Will you show us something more? May I ask what you ladies are doing? What everyone does. We're evaluating. A solid eight? You know, on a scale from one to ten, you look quite spiffy, sir. Why are you smoothing with some sucker who's already suited and booted for his own funeral? And you, lousy fop, got an itch and looking for some philandering at the marble orchard, are you? Six, five, Zero, there's nothing here for you. Mr. Eight got some you-know-what, so he caught our eye. And vice versa, I can tell. Get ready for some shellacking, lads. We got a dandy looking for some extra ventilation. And, as luck would have it, not too far from the orchard either. Sir, you have the unique opportunity of becoming a ten. Get a stake for when your life is at stake. Make any vampire quickly retire. An aspen stake for you, sir? Premium wood carved at midnight on the solstice. They're cheap. Vampires? I don't think so. What do you mean? The dead rising at the cemetery? They must be vampires. Vampires are saluters attracted by blood and sizzling passion. There's nothing interesting for them among the dead. It's what people believe that matters. The stakes are exquisite, I must admit. What else do you sell? Holy icons, miraculous Marys, salt. Table salt? 
consecrated, but the stakes, I tell you, sir. Ever since they buried the magician, they've been selling like hotcakes. Anyone with some sense buys them. Do you believe in all of this? I believe in money. And if people are willing to buy a stick out of fear, then who am I to argue? This buried magician, is it Shulski? I think so. It makes no difference to me what his name was. For him, stakes are not enough. We need to call the Pope. Don't tell anyone or I'll lose my livelihood. Goodbye. I hope the vampires don't take revenge on you. They have no interest in me. I'm anemic. Hey, please, tell your friends. On Wednesdays, I sell four steaks for the price of two. What is this foolishness? Open this gate! Right. No one can keep us from entering the cemetery. It's a free country. Well... How long are you going to keep wagging your chins? If it's closed, it's closed! Oh, Mr. Shulsky, finally! I read your message. What is it about? Ah, uh, I won't talk about it out here in front of these boors. Come inside. You're letting him in, Gravedigger? What the hell is going on? Shut your mouths or I won't open till Judgment Day. This is about your father, you know. All right, let's see what this is about. Bah! What did my father do this time? I've got two pieces of news, so to speak. There's bad news, and I'm not sure what the other one is. Which do you want to hear first? Tell me the bad news. Today some rebel rousers came here and started making trouble. They ravaged your family too. What do you mean, ravaged? I couldn't believe it either. I sent you a note immediately. What about the other news? One night, I went out and saw the dead lying around. But not in their places, you know? in the pathways, and then I saw their graves dug up, as if the dead crept right out of the ground. And these bodies are still lying here? No, of course not. You can't do that. But if you want to learn more about the case, they might come out again tomorrow night. People are starting to talk about resurrections and the end of the world. Resurrections and now these maniacs! Judgment Day seems to be upon us. You know? Those vandals that ravaged the tomb, what did they look like? I closed the gate because they're still hanging around there. Why don't you see for yourself, you know? According to my knowledge, dead bodies don't rise on their own. Were there any witnesses? Any noise at night? Traces? Nothing. Just the stiffs in odd places. Goodbye. Get rid of this scum at once! Darn it. Look at him. I think he's a real, you know, tempromancer. I'll show you how you talk to magicians. Are you so eager to die, tempromancer? Then who are you, anyway? We're the ones who purge the world from scum like you! I'm a bit sorry now, but I think you will be too.
in a moment. You heard him. He asked for it. Let's take a look around. So, Mr. Shulsky. You gave those lads by the tomb a good belting, huh? I could hear the echoes. Thank you, but they weren't too keen to talk, and I have a few questions to ask. Maybe I could help, you know? It's a rather grim job you've got here. Well, you know. I'd rather do this than struggle with drunkards in a bar or bolts in a factory. The dead are calm and predictable. You know? Unless they start rising from the grave, that is. What is the WAS? Those fellas at the mausoleum were connected with it. Ah, the Warsaw anti thaumaturge Society. Loonies, you know? Ever since your father was laid to rest here, they've been yelling their heads off by the walls. Where can I find their bosses? You know? Why? Do you smell blood? There's one behind the cemetery wall inciting the crowd. Ask him. Once you have cleaned up near the mausoleum, I can open the gate. Goodbye. Good luck with the WAS, you know? Let me know when you get rid of them. Are you wondering if your shaggy mug will stick out among the great and the good? We do have barbers in Warsaw, you know. Recently I met a bearded guy who's not especially fussy about his appearance. And yes, people welcome him everywhere with open arms anyway. Mm, maybe he's a natural charmer. I've heard that can get you into the Imperial even without a tailcoat. Very funny. 
Are you getting dressed so we can go, or have you changed your plans? Yes, let's go and see if I do fit in. In that case, I'll go get changed too. Look at you. And here I worried I was the only one who looked good in trousers. Very chic choice. Thank you. You look fantastic. Thank you. You think Papa would be mad that we're going to a party right after his funeral? I hope so. Victor. He could have kept from losing the Black Grimoire. Are we ready? Yes, the carriage is waiting. Welcome to the Imperial Hotel. How may I help you? Ligia Szulska, here on the invitation of Svetlana Romianceva. Yes, we are expecting you, of course. The uh, soiree is taking place in apartment 237, second floor. I wish you a thrilling and successful evening. I'm impressed. How did you sort that out? Our name still means something. Let's do our best to keep it that way, all right? Who are you, my golden slithering friend? Victor? Victor! Victor! Can you hear me? Yes, of, of course. These people are just waiting for us to put a foot wrong, understand? We're walking into the Vipers then, brother. Everything's all right. I just got a little lost in thought. I'll be good, I promise. I'm going to hang around here a little longer. I'll meet you upstairs. Huh. See you there. Well, well, someone new. Good evening. Good evening, Viktor Szulski. Irina Orlova of those Orlovs. This is Natalia Obolenskaya, and this strangely quiet soul is our delightful Sofia Skawan. Irina is exaggerating. <laughs> nice to meet you, Mr. Szulski. The Governor General's daughter herself. How do you do? What can you tell us? How are you enjoying yourselves? We can't complain. Seeing as we're debutantes, we're getting a lot of attention. Really? Maybe you'll tell us something about yourself. I've heard a certain secret. Do you want to hear it? Come now, we won't tell anyone. Someone was recently playing with a lock on one of the gilded cages, wondering what would happen if all the birds escaped captivity. And I know for certain it was one of you. Sophia, that sounds like you. Admit it. And now what will happen to us, Mr. Shulsky? I assure you, your secrets are safe with me. On one condition. What's that? 
In exchange for my discretion, I need another secret of yours. That's the only way to keep everyone in check. What should I choose? Our fathers don't know we're here. There you are. How naughty. None of your fathers know? None. Especially not Sophia's. Otherwise, he wouldn't have let her come. I'm very satisfied with this trade. And what now? I need to slip away for a moment. We should go as well. We've really forgotten ourselves around you. That's nice to hear, but I understand. The soiree won't wait. I hear Rumyantseva has invited a real medium. Will there be ghosts? That I'd like to see. What did we come here for? These soirees are for old people. Good evening. May I? Please, we're not discussing anything consequential. <laughs> you keep on worrying about yourselves. I intend to make the most of this evening. See, I told you he was in love. Miss Skawan is out of your league, my friend. To say nothing of her father. Old Skawan and I are practically on first name terms now. You'll see. I'm sure. So, one eye-catching girl has already got an admirer. What does that leave us, Maxime? Hmm, not much. The dull, the silly, or, well, the old. En parlant de Ligia Shulska, <laughs> she just passed this way. Pigs will fly before someone fancies her. She'd actually prefer Sophia Skawan, according to what I've heard. Well, what do you think? My name is Viktor Shulsky. Well, there we have it. And I don't like what I just heard, especially about my sister. And, uh, what are you going to do about it? Pardon me, gentlemen. I promised that I would be well behaved tonight. Lunatic. Mr. Shulsky? I didn't expect to see you here, of all places. You don't know how very flattering that is. And what brings you to the Imperial? I could ask you the same question. I'm passing the time. Ah, oh, curious hobby. I'm simply interested in people. Do you know these circles well? They're not hard to figure out. A gang of not too bright layabouts chasing amusement after amusement after amusement. Do you feel part of that gang? I'm not one of them. And neither are you. Nor was your father. Who are you, really? Just someone who wants to enjoy himself at a party. If I may, there's one question niggling at me. How did you get so many scars? Why do you ask? I've heard that Russian officers in training have drunken duels with sabers after hours. Mm, no. A very peculiar custom, if that's true. So where did those scars come from? I've led an interesting life. The cream of Warsaw society is here, so I thought it would be worth showing my face. With a name like yours, I'm sure you fit right in. After all, someone must have invited you. I'm not worthy. My sister brought me along out of pity, I think. And so, Miss Ligia is here too. Why do you ask? No reason. What are you hoping for this evening? Who knows? Maybe I'm keeping an eye out for the future Mrs. Shulska. <laughs> Best of luck. You'll need it.
since Ligia ended up with the entire inheritance. How do you know all these things? People talk, I listen. That's all. Who did you say you were to my father? A trusted acquaintance. I supported him with good advice. Though truth be told, he rarely needed it. Your father had a gift for making good decisions. Which of my father's decisions would those be? Ones that were good for your family. Perhaps we'll have the chance to return to this another time. Goodbye, Mr. Shulsky. Yes, I'm sure. Thaumaturgy never fails me. There is something here. Maybe that's enough. What do you want? The trick with entering someone's head. I know one person who can do that. You're not much of a thaumaturge if you can't. <laughs> Have you come here to torment me? Unmask me? I don't see any fun in unmasking you. So what do you want? Your serum is quite impressive. Flattery will get you nowhere. Madame, you're being impolite. What about a little competition? We'll see who wins. I'll pass. I think your idea of pretending to be a medium is fantastic. It sounds like I impress you. How many people know? Is that a threat? I noticed a wild saluter here. I understand your being here has something to do with him in particular. Keep your nose out of this. Why? Because I'm warning you. What do you know about this saluter? Do you know its name? Don't you? A name doesn't tell us much anyway. All that matters is picking out the person in this crowd with the floor. I know perfectly well who carries the flaw. Another reason for you to stay out of it. The person with the flaw attended the cells, right? <sighs> so I'm on the right track. Have you finished? So should we finish up? That would be best. And listen to me carefully, Mr. Whatever your name is. Shulski, but you can call me Victor. Now, Mr. Shulski, you will vanish like a bad dream, and I will get back to work. Shulski, don't play with me. Do you know the host as well? Will you leave me alone if I say I don't? No. Svetlana Pietrovna invited me, and I am doing my best to meet her expectations. Let's keep out of one another's way. Whose soul are you summoning tonight, dear madame? I only know which one I'd prefer to banish. Shoo! Maybe my dead father's? If you manage that, it would spare me a lot of trouble. Now we'll never know. I saw one of your posters. You look different in it. Really? The illustration doesn't reflect reality? How should I take that? No one warned me that I should get in costume for the party. Ugh, I beg your pardon. I'm just noting that you stand out among these boring guests. Impudent. Just a bit uncouth, I'd say. I'll disappear. For now. 
Sometimes it's good to let things go and leave other people in peace for your own benefit. I think I'll take up this gauntlet. And the general says to him, tell us something funny. Then Bautsky replies, General, why don't you shoot a cannon first? That's a good one. I'll have to tell it tomorrow at the Orwafs. Who might this be joining our conversation? You know, sir, your face looks familiar to me. My name is Viktor Shulsky. Ah, oh, yes, I can see something in your eyes. I was sorry to hear about your father. I'll see you next time, darling. Wonderful party. See you there. I think I've offended the creme de la creme of Warsaw. This is hardly the creme de la creme. How do you find my soiree? I admit I'm getting reacquainted with the social scene. You spent a long time traveling, didn't you? Fifteen years. Over that time, I got used to harsher surroundings. And believe me, drawing rooms can be just as dangerous as untamed steps. You've met Anastasia and Marina. What about the others? I've already met several distinguished guests. Madame Samira definitely stands out. She is exceptional, isn't she? Her presence is the crowning glory of the evening. Has anyone else caught your eye? Ivan Konechkin, for instance. Apparently, he knew my father. How remarkable. I wasn't aware. Konechkin is something of a secretive person. And have you yet had occasion to meet the debutants of this season? I'll be sure to seek them out. This evening, Sofia Skowen herself is to grace us with her presence. Well, well. I suggest you move quickly. The competition is fierce. How is it, being part of the Tsar's court? It is a blessing and a curse. Forgive me if I do not elaborate. The crux of the matter is that I'm here because of my father. You knew him. That doesn't sound like a question. Of course, I was his customer. I truly am sorry for you. Both of you, the death of someone close is always a dreadful blow. Please accept my condolences. Svetlana Piotrovna, I must insist. Can you tell me something more about my father? Mr. Shulsky, I assure you we have the most delectable vodka. Besides that, I warmly encourage you to join Madame Samira's seance. It will be an unforgettable experience. Hmm, I wonder, is that truly everything our soiree can offer you? I've got no choice but to suffer through tonight. No need to mince words. I felt something. Where is it? I was looking for you. Do you smoke, Mr. Shulsky? I've quit. In light of our approaching conversation, why don't we dispense with the pleasantries? Call me Svetlana. 
Wiktor. Ask. The burned note. Who sent it? I only sensed underhanded kindness. Da. The Ochrana. I don't know which one of them exactly, if that's what you're asking. I've worked hard at it. The Ochrana? It stands for Atelenie po ochranieniu abszczestwiennoj bezpasności i pariatka. In other words, the secret police. I know what they are. I'd like to know what they want. Knowledge. The Tsar's eyes and ears must be on guard. They infiltrate not only the city, but most importantly, the court. And me and my Suarez too, I'm sure. When did you receive this note? A few weeks ago, back before your father. I see. That large travel chest, you changed your mind about whether or not to pack. Right then, I wanted to escape badly, but that would have had its own consequences. In this game of false appearances, I'm the best. You two had an affair. <sighs> two grown-up, lonely people found momentary comfort in each other's arms. But romance wasn't behind that relationship. It was just that we were both looking in the same direction. I didn't have the chance to get to know him as a person, much less one who'd show such emotion. You mean love, that? Was it love? I miss him, that's all. What do you mean by looking in the same direction? I still don't know how this lovely note ended up in your hands. But in addition, I found a lovely strings of pearls, and on it, your feelings of guilt. Your power is terrifying. Do you know that? Tsarina Alexandra gave you those pearls. You two are close. I am her confidant. I could call her my friend. I see how much she devotes to her family and the nation. Yet something has changed. Your feelings of guilt. Do they have something to do with Sarina Alexandra? With the whole empire. Ruski Mir in Podavai. We, the establishment, perceive the need for change. We want reform. The Colossus is already teetering, but... If it falls. La guillotine, mon chéri. But I want to live, Victor. Ideally, closer to the West. Where was my father in all this? Willingly or otherwise, he was part of the establishment that wanted change and could see revolution before it arrived. The Ochrana knew about you, hence the note. They must have noticed something. Isn't it time you told me why you really came to my soirée? Do you think the Ochrana killed my father? Your father was crushed by a building. I don't think that's how the Ochrana works. Perhaps you're right. What do you intend to do now? Nothing. The soirées will continue. Society has come to expect it. Everything will stay the same. I, myself, shall manage. I hoped you might know something about the Black Grimoire. My father left it to me in his will, but the Grimoire has gone missing. No. And the collapsed building? Have you been there? There's nothing there. My dear boy, I know nothing about Stanislav's book. I'm sorry, but I can't help you there. But I will not let you leave empty-handed. I strongly believe that there is one place you ought to visit. What you find there belongs to you. Thank you. No, thank you for listening.
I know you. I remember you from books. What's your name? <laughs> Don't run away. Splendid ladies, distinguished gentlemen, the hour is at hand. With lights dimmed and the curtains drawn, the souls of the dead slowly gather among us. On their command, I will give the chosen among you a tarot card as your invitation to the table. For you, sir? Fool. Our dear madame is fooling around and thinks you can scare me off. I'm done wasting time on this. Let us gather in secret ritual. Let's not keep the souls waiting too long. Let us also make every effort together not to spoil their visit. Mr. Shulsky, may I have a word? How can I help? My friends and I are just playing truth order, and now it's my turn. Won't you dazzle me with your powers? First, please tell me the rules of this game. Of course, I'm being silly. After all, you've been away a long time. It's simple. Each player, in turn, must admit a truth or accept a dare. Anyone who doesn't must drop out of the game and thereby loses. And I don't like to lose. I would guess that to you, a dare would be the lesser of two evils. How very perceptive. It involves finding out my comrades' secrets, Irina, Maxim or Sergei. The trick is that you're cleverer at it than I am. Your companions don't have anything against a little ruse like this? It's not deception, it's resourcefulness. In theory, there's no rule against asking for help. Please don't make me back, Mr. Shulski. Let me see what I can find. Will any secret do? Any. I wait anxiously for your return. I'll take a look around. Getting impatient. What have you found out? As far as Sergei. Yes. I'll be honest. He'd do anything for you. Anything, you say? Maxim only has one thing on his mind Miss Irina. Oh, I knew it! Might Irina return his interest? Miss Irina would like to get to know Maxim better, but she keeps hesitating. What? She never told me. Some friend she is. Oh, I was wondering where you'd gone off to. 
You know Sergei, don't you? We're already acquainted. Mr. Shulsky and I have completed my extra difficult dirt together. At your service. Now, time for truth. Are you seeing anyone? My heart is already taken. I was counting on a different response. Mr. Shulsky, our time is up. Sofia and I must leave for the seance. Madame is waiting. Thank you once more. See you. Therefore, the Savica chased Sofia Skawan and her floor here. She seemed like such an innocent girl, didn't she? Unless you count sending her admirer on a deadly trip to Africa. If I want to discern that little schemer's flaw, I'll have to join that sepulchral table. Either her scheming or her jealous knight in shining armor will help me identify her flaw. Gentlemen, meet my brother. Viktor Shulsky. The last Shulsky to wear trousers. You don't know that. Miss Ligia could yet produce an heir to the fortune. Maybe even with me, if she doesn't tell my wife. But let's talk like men. You intend to take over your father's company, correct? First, I suggest you mind your own business. Your marriage, for instance. Perhaps Louisa isn't the ninny you take her for. I beg your pardon? Hasn't it occurred to you that when you leave her at home, she might also take advantage of her solitude? What are you suggesting? You've got a cuckold's horns. Was I being too subtle? I suppose it's true what they say about you. Yes, what's that? You've lost your mind. Thank you. I've worked long and hard at that. Good luck with your business, miss. I almost feel sorry for them. Have I crossed the line? Nonsense. Any progress with Svetlana? Unfortunately, Svetlana doesn't want to breathe a word of it. I'm sure she doesn't trust you. In company like this, that speaks well of her. Why the cold shoulder, Ligia? I've never liked her. Her manner gets under my skin. I've heard she's a dreadful schemer. Hmm. Did you know that Papa had an affair with the host of this party? Uh, are you sure? Absolutely. As sure as the thermometers can be. I felt what he felt when, uh, well, you know. Oh, stop! That's disgusting! Quickly, change the subject. Guess who I ran into again? All mysterious and carved up. Ivan Konietkin? What do you know about him? Mm, not much. He was an acquaintance of Papa's. Well, in theory, it's thanks to him that we're here. What? Nigia? I know that nothing comes for free, but he really didn't want anything. Yeah, he looks like a real altruist. I've taken a long, deep look at Samira. She's no medium. Samira is a thaumaturge on the hunt. On the hunt? Madame has spotted a salutor that's attached to one of the guests. What kind of salutor? Remember those fairy tales Mother used to read us? Uh, and the legend of the golden snake? Yes, Venice. Yes, I'm glad you're here. Are you also hunting for him? 
I admit I like to have him. I haven't made up my mind. Be careful. I am. That's why I haven't made up my mind. Sofia Skawan, the Governor General's daughter. Do you know her? No, and I don't suggest you make her acquaintance either. Skawan can't stand thaumaturges. You enjoying yourself in this viper's den? Oh, the vodka is quite tolerable. I'm observing my own brother taking out his anger on ordinary mortals. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm going. Is this seat free? The energy is dissipating. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I am losing contact with his souls. Well, it was the souls that chose me after all. It's true. The gentleman has a card. <laughs> Let us lay our hands on the table. Let us allow our minds to liberate themselves from our bodies toward the edges of the world as you know it. Are you thinking of someone exceptional whom you wish to summon? That's exactly the sort of person I had in mind. Oh, is it a long lost love? Rather a future delightful acquaintance. Leave her alone. Sergei, this has nothing to do with you. Dear guests, I implore you, the souls! Your devotion goes unnoticed, and you know full well why that is. I do! I am your father's choice, not yours, aren't I? Quiet, please! Well, this will make your companions happy! Making fools of people, heaven forbid! Sit down! My poor heart! Uh, focus on someone you want to make contact with. There is one soul I'd like to summon. Whom do you mean? Teofil Skalski. Does that name mean anything to you? The poor man drowned on the way to Africa, didn't he? No, it wasn't like that. I didn't know he would be killed. Are you planning a similar fate for Sergei? All this just to get under your father's skin? So what if it was? Do you know what it's like to live in the shadow of a cold, absent father? Rings a bell. Is it such a sin to want to be loved? The powers you and your kind have are terrifying. That's why people hate you! That's why my father is cracking down on you! All that matters is I have what I wanted. Don't you dare! <sighs> You were supposed to stay away. I was supposed to leave here with Velis. All that work for nothing. Tell me, what don't I understand? Do you know who she is? Who her father is? You're right. Sophia Skawan was meant to have her floor removed discreetly. But I suppose it's too late for that, isn't it? Someone hired you to remove the floor from Sophia. Who? Take a guess. Anyway, it doesn't matter now. All right, take Veles. He's yours. Keep him. It's not him I was after, fool. What's done can't be undone. Sophia Skawan is now the center of the scandal. I have this under control. I know how to give Sophia's story a happy ending. I hope we don't all come to regret it.
until Rasputin sees you. Then you'll stop fighting me. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, this evening the souls were particularly restless. Sofia? Did you enjoy the show? My best so far. So, I suppose now is the time to applaud. And you, sir, what can you tell us? Let it sink in that you're free, finally. Neither your father nor your environment define you. Everyone heard those atrocious words from my lips. I can't undo that. But you're right. You freed me. I know what it means to live in the shadow of a father, but that's all behind me now. What did you do? I met someone who helped me undo the mistakes I made because of my father. It sounds like that was someone very dear to you. What's going on here? The guests are complaining, and with good cause, I see. We're terminating this disaster. Farewell, Viktor Shulsky. See you. No, I don't think so. Will the gentleman with a book be leaving peacefully, or should we show him out? No need, I can make it to the door. Madame, honored guests. Victor, don't scare me like that. Mr. Sursky, are you all right? I think it's time for us to go. I'll snug us a carriage. You'll have a hard time at this hour. I'll drop you off. See, you can always count on Mr. Konechkin. Victor. Thank you. That's very polite. Thank you for an interesting evening. I'm sorry it all turned out like this. Not tonight, please.
Konieczkin is up to something. Victor, if not for him, he really helped us tonight. I don't want to talk about it tonight. Good night. The telephone. Hello? 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 Victor? Speaking. Victor, Uncle Sasha here. How are you? Have you visited your old stomping ground yet? I've rediscovered something so like a comfortable bed. The city has changed a lot, as have we all. The most important thing to me right now is retrieving my father's grimoire. Your grimoire? I wish you luck, boy. Yes, I'm fine, thank you. And how are you, uncle? I wanted a need. I need your help, boy. It's a very delicate matter. Are you able to find a moment for your uncle? All right. So where should we meet? Remember where I took you kids for donuts? Uh, I do. <laughs> Let's meet there. Maybe we can reminisce about the old days. Better days. See you then, Victor. Thank you. Yes, sir? Please let me in. It's urgent. You can't just turn up like this. What will I tell sir and madam? Fear not. I'm here for Rasputin. I can sense he's in a drawing room. It's good to see you. Although, I think I can already see what you need. Let's not waste time. How about that? I'll be very grateful to you for another round of help. Let me share something about your pace in hunting for salutors. Aren't you losing yourself too much in it? Again? Is there something you want to tell me? Do you not want to help me anymore? Nonsense. You can always count on me. I'm just worried. Close your eyes and focus on my words. Concentrate on my voice. Relax and focus within yourself. Follow my voice inside yourself. Do you see him? He's remarkable. <laughs> I... I can't tame him. You can, and you will. Look, he's afraid of you. Calm your heartbeat. It will scare him off. Calm yourself. You look better. You slept a long time. Yes, it feels that way. What year is it? 
Still 1905. Yet time flows on inexorably. Have you seen the future again? I don't know if it's the future. It could just be some symbols I don't know how to interpret. Heavy clouds drifting over battlefields, reaping a deadly harvest, and these faceless beings walking among strangely contorted bodies, and the ship, unsinkable, yet it went down with thousands on board. I feel as though I could have stopped it. Did you watch me sleeping? You still drool. I think I shouldn't abuse the Nadarzhinsky's hospitality any further. That distressed woman you mentioned, Svetlana. You know, I saw her in my vision. That surly maid brought me the gossip about her that was going around town. This Svetlana is causing herself trouble. I don't remember talking to you about Svetlana. Maybe that's an effect of our treatments. I hope everything comes back to you. What was this gossip, may I ask? Nothing that would sully her in your eyes. She intrigued me. I'd like to meet her. And you know, I think she needs help. Help? What do you want me to do? Bring her to me. I won't keep you. Until next time. Hi, Victor. Something held me up. Have you been waiting long? Just a moment. Welcome back to our favorite square. A lot of good memories, hmm? That's true, I do have fond memories of this place. You were so small. You, Ligia and Petya would always race from the Drushki to the booth. And then we'd hold up the entire line, until we finally decided what filling we wanted in our donuts. And Ligia would always rush you. That's because she only likes them with plum. Who does that? <laughs> anyway, I'm guessing you need my help. You truly are your father's son. To the point. To the point. All right. It's about a certain incident at the Imperial Hotel. Is it about the confusion that supposedly aroused during one of the recurrent soirees? Do you know what happened there? No, not at all. I wasn't there. Good. Because the party know nothing about attracted the interest of several important figures. 
I'm just saying. But that's not what I wanted to talk about. It's about Pietia. And the Imperial Hotel, someone... A boy fell from a balcony and he's dead. Those hyenas from the Warsaw Courier have already jumped on it. How is it linked to Pietia? Is he all right? Yes, yes, he's fine. But you see, that wretched balcony is part of his apartment. I didn't know Pietia lived at the Imperial. He didn't mention it when I saw him at the funeral. He rents an apartment. Says he's more comfortable that way. Closer to his friends. You know, I'd like to be more in touch with him. You're not very close? Since losing Helena, it's been up and down between us. My work kept me from devoting enough attention to him. Maybe I was too lenient with him. Who was the guy who died? Ludwig Krajewski. He and Pietia were from two different worlds. You know, the Krajewskis are... They're not wealthy. There's nothing wrong with that, but how did he and Pietia meet? That you'll have to ask my son. And what role exactly am I here to play, uncle? Do what you do best. Use your powers to find out how Ludwig's death is connected to Pietia. With all due respect to Stasio, I don't want to make the same mistake judging my only son as he did. I want to know the truth, whatever it is. And those Krajewskis. I know the press is trying to contact them. I fear that without your help, they might publish something untrue. I'll go see Pietia. And where can the Krajewskis be found? They live in a courtyard facing apartment of a tenement house near the Imperial. I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Thank you. Go. I stay here for a while. Nobody's home? They are, they are. They just won't answer the door. Tobias Fegi, the Warsaw Courier. Maybe they want to mourn their son in peace rather than talk to the press. What are you looking for here? Information. But I think my methods are more effective. Then maybe I will leave, and later you can share something. Deal? All right, if I learn anything interesting, I'll share it with you. Great. It's a deal. I will hold you to your word. You chased him away? Glory be! Thank you. Please, come in before he gets back. Let me at least offer you some tea. Thaumaturgy never fails me. There is something here. Come in. Would you like some tea? My name's Krajewski. Zygmunt. Viktor Shulski. Thank you. Maybe later. I have a question. Is it about Ludwig? Since you brushed that news hand off. All right. Ask away. 
Do you get invaded by the press often? Not a day passes without someone knocking at the door, sniffing around, reopening wounds, looking for a scoop. But each one of them also promises money. We're not wealthy, and after Ludwig's death, we have even less. You could use some money now. Sure, but I really don't know what I could tell the news hounds. That's enough. Can I ask you about Ludwig's belongings? You've looked around by now. I found a photo of a young woman. Who is she? This is Hannah, Ludwig's sweetheart. They had been seeing each other for a while. She was here not long ago. After... what happened. An elegant man's coat is it Ludwig's. I don't have the heart to sell it. Ludwig liked it so much. Pietja gave it to him. I've seen the doctor's bill. I think this is trash. Did Ludwig live here with you? Not much recently. Pietja kept inviting him to all kinds of places. Parties, dances, horse racing. Did it happen often? What? Pietja's invitations? Yes. I would tell him Ruskis were not appropriate company for him. Perhaps Ludwig was impressed with it all. You bet. But if you ask me, Pietja was using Ludwig so that others would admire him for spending time with a poor man. So, there you have it. That's enough. Goodbye. You didn't introduce yourself, but I have my own ways of getting to the truth. W.S. Viktor Shulsky. Are you one of those Shulskys? Stanislav's son? No. What do you want? Our little deal, remember? Piotr Voronin and Ludwig Krajewski were friends. Piotr showered Ludwig with gifts, took him to fancy places. That's an interesting angle. Uh, from rags to riches, or a bumpkin at the banquet. Hmm. No, still not right. Thank you. I'm sure it'll make a catchy headline. I'm glad I could meet you. In that case, until next time, Mr. W. Hello. Mr. Shulsky, hello. Shall I inform the authorities and hospitals, or shall I wait? Your last visit has become somewhat of a legend. This time it'll be quiet, I promise. I'm here to see Pyotr Voronin. Is Master Voronin moving out by any chance? Not that I know of. Why should you care? The gatherings that the young master deigns to organize are rather noisy and bothersome. The guests have been complaining. Some have left. Never mind. Where can I find our pest? Room 213, second floor. You've been there already.
So, same thing tonight, gentlemen? You bet. I'll get some cognac. It will help relax the atmosphere. Who's this guy? It's just my cousin. Hello, Victor. Meet Thomas and Franz. Did you miss me? I wanted to see how you've settled in. Take a look around. It gets quite interesting here during my modest parties. Want some champagne? About these parties, I think someone got lost on the balcony recently. It was Papa who sent you, wasn't it? I told him to stay out of this! Tomas, Franz, show my cousin the door. As you can see, I can be stubborn. Congratulations. Franz and Thomas are tough customers. Well, speak up. I don't have all day. What happened that night, from your point of view? Thanks, cousin. It's hard for me to talk about it. He was my friend. We were having fun. Whiskey, cigars, and other amusements. Ludwig got drunk and went out on the balcony. He yelled something about wanting to get higher, even higher. And then there was a scream and a shriek from down below. I stepped out onto the balcony and Ludwig... He was down there, dead. How do you want to end it? Your friend is dead. He was someone's son. Yes, the Krajewskis. I know they're poor, but I can help them with that. They say the press is interested in them. I've heard. I'm not worried about myself, but it may damage Papa's reputation. And it could take a toll on the Krajewskis too. I want to protect them. Money is no object. I went to see the Krajewskis. How are they? They remember how close you two were, how much Ludwig cherished your friendship and your gifts. Really? The Krajewskis remember me? Hello? Who is it? Did she introduce herself? No, do not let her in under any circumstances. Damn it. You have an unwelcome guest? Mind your own business, cousin. I insist you let me in! 
I have already told you, madam. Master Voronin is not here. Perhaps I could help you somehow. Let's talk. Please do. Best of luck. Uh, I'd do anything for a short break from those annoying guests of his. I will get to that bastard no matter what. Don't even try to throw me out. Quite the opposite. I can help you. But first, I'd like to know why he didn't want to let you in. <laughs> because he's afraid to look me in the eye. And I'm carrying his child. I see. Peter should hear the joyful news. <laughs> Please give me a moment. I'd like to ask about Hanya. Hey, Zdenek! There's a stalker here, asking about Hanya. Grab your buddies and get him to stop bothering her. What's going on here? I've just come to work to find all this hustle and bustle. The boss said you asked about me. What is it? Miss Hanya, I'm Victor. The guy fell off a balcony at the Imperial Hotel. You were there when Ludwig died, weren't you? I remember no such thing. I know you went out with Ludwig. It must have been devastating for you. Once again, I don't know anything. If these drunks here were still standing straight, you'd be sorry. Leave me alone. Once again, I don't know anything. 
holding on to that contract weighs heavily on you. It's unbearable, isn't it? It causes you great pain. Your misery will disappear if you give it to me. You will get your peace, I promise. I can't take it anymore. I can't. It reminds me of what I don't want to remember. I'll give it to you. Here, their contract. Thank you. Tell me, what really happened that day? Ludwig and Pietia were both drunk and made a bet. If Ludwig walked on a railing, Pietia would pay him. A lot. Ludwig was confident. <laughs> he teetered, and... Why didn't you get rid of the contract? You could have destroyed it. I wanted to, but... I was afraid Pietia would send someone after me to save himself. The contract is proof of his guilt. But it was my idea for them to sign it. The Krajewskis could use the money. We could have gotten married, gotten away. It doesn't matter now. Take it. I'll be going. Anya, quit chatting. There's beer to be sold. I hope you'll use this contract wisely. What do you mean? Pietia deserves to suffer after what he did. Mr. Shulsky, can I help you? Think about it. This lady can get away with doing a lot more to hotel guests than you ever could. Remember, she will only make life miserable for Pietia. That's true. I hope the young master is happy to see you. That's incredible. Thank you. I will go bring that bastard to his senses. Please join me. It will be quite the spectacle. Let her in? Are you out of your mind? You should ask yourself that question. Don't act like a brat. You're going to be a father. Get out of here. I told you I would pay. Leave me alone. I hope life teaches you a lesson someday. Why are you standing like that? I can see something interesting in you, cousin. What the hell are you talking about? Aren't you ashamed to turn Anna away like that? Is that how your father raised you? Nobody asked for your advice. You'll enjoy yourself while she's dispossessed. 
she'll end up in the streets together with your child. Two lives in one blow. Well done. What was a poor man like Ludwig doing with a rich bachelor like you? Don't say that. I did him a favor by buying a new life for him. A prince leaning over a pariah. Wasn't that right? I made his life better. Why did you come back? To harass me? Your father should have drowned you rather than send you to Paris. Soon you will be free and you will take it all back. Are you all right? Yes. I haven't felt this good in a long time. It's like someone lifted a shroud from my head. I found the contract you signed with Ludwig before he fell. So Hanya told you everything? Maybe that's for the best. I don't care what you do with it. I don't want to see that piece of paper. I hung around with Ludwig just for show, to be honest. He didn't deserve it. I was a little harsh on you. Don't mention it. Although, if you want to make it up to me... Then? I know a girl who is waiting for your apology. Damn. Anna. Shut up, Snake. Did you think we wouldn't find out? It's your tsunami. I hope you clean up after yourselves. Rumiancewa, here's your news akamiernik. But I haven't done anything. We can always come up with something. Arrest him. What do you If you hadn't shown up here, I need a moment. Leave me. Why are the Ohrana after you? Evidently, they got tired of sending threatening letters. Or maybe it's because my last soirée ended with a scandal about the Governor General's daughter. I think they're looking for someone to blame. But you had nothing to do with what happened to Sofia. I know, 
But how can you be sure? Truth be told... Yeah, Victor. There was a wild salutar at the party. Anyway, if I hadn't caught him, then Samira... Your father was right about you. Don't you dare! No, don't you dare! You're the one who caused the trouble, so you're going to arrange my safe transportation to Vienna. Is that clear? Yes. Good. And now forgive me, but I have no intention of staying here a moment longer. Where may I await your return? At the Nadarzyńskis. Perfect. Can we leave immediately? Come on. I'll hail you a carriage. Wait, my travel chest. I never go anywhere without it. Feel safer if you rode with me to the Nadazhinskis. If I'm going to help you, I first have to visit the place where a friendship was born and more than one hope died, where the gods of chaos lounge amid the absinthe fumes. What? I need to go to the London bar. Just hurry, please. What now, sir? I bring you the sad truth, but I believe Ludwig deserves it. Your son was supposed to walk on the railing to win money from Pietia. Jesus, I told him. I kept telling him it wasn't the right company to keep. I told him. I'll be going. Thank you for telling me this, Mr. Shulski. Hello, Uncle. What brings you here? So what's new, Uncle? Crime to underworld, as usual, thanks. We need to talk about Pietia. Great. Yes, you know what? Let's start walking again. It's kind of stuffy here, you know. And on the bench. 
I'll be able to think straight about what you're saying. Well, shoot, boy. No matter how much it hurts. Ludwig and Pietia got drunk and they made a bet. Ludwig had to walk on the railing for a large sum of money from Pietia. <sighs> we know how it ended. Pietia. Pietia. What have you done? I told the Krajewskis about it. I thought they should know the truth. I suppose they go to the press now. Don't get me wrong. It's a good thing they know. I'm glad they know the truth. There's one more thing. Evidence. Proof of Pietia's complicity. I believe you should have it. Well, you'll soon be a grandfather, uncle. Congratulations. So, my son will have an illegitimate child. Who is the poor girl? The important thing is he wants to take care of her. He's taking responsibility. Responsibility? Damn it, Victor! He should have thought that before! Is there anything else? That's all, uncle. Thank you for taking care of that matter. I believe that if your younger self had that kind of support, your life could have been different. Tell me, what will happen to Pietia now? He will, as you said, take responsibility and marry the mother of his child. I will make him, if I have to. I am glad the Krajewskis heard the truth from you. I'm proud of you, and Stasia would be too. I'm not sure about that, but I accept the compliment. What are you going to do with that contract? What do you think I should do? I don't know. <laughs> it's getting late. I'll take a walk and think. Good night. Good night, Uncle. A few days, Mr. Digits. A few days. You see this guy? M Mr. Digits, I'll pay it back, I swear. They're running tomorrow at Makoto Race Track. I'll win. Deal? We had one as long as you paid your dues. I'm begging you. Quit your bawling. You'll get tear stains on my rug. It's Persian. You look tired. Want a coffee? Whenever I see you, you torturing somebody. Is there something you want to talk about? Don't you psychoanalyze me. Just tell me if you want coffee. Always glad for a coffee. Can I interrupt you for a second? I'm in a rush. I'm just sorting something out with this cow face here who doesn't pay on time. Where should we start? Teeth or knees? Please, don't let him. I only owe 12 rubles. Can I cover his debt with his money? Yes, I beg you. I promise you, sir, I'll repay every kopejka. Well, you've got a sponsor. All right. 
Get him out of here. So, how'd you take it? Black or cream and sugar? Black, strong, no sugar. Tell me what brings you here. There's a certain woman who'd like to disappear from Warsaw. Conventional transportation isn't an option. What exactly do you mean by disappear? I don't want to kill her. It's Warsaw, Victor. We have a lot of options. We can ship her out of the country, send her to a brothel, kill her, and use the corpse to fertilize geraniums. So be careful what you wish for. I'm looking for safe and discreet transportation to Vienna. On the double quick. Sadly, the shifts can't help. That's not our line. Passport policy is a nightmare, and smuggling will get you the news. Not worth it. But I know a man, Javier. Javier something or other. Find him. Um, although, finding him might be tricky. What kind of name is that? Argentinian? Spanish? Who the hell knows? Maybe he had a sailor for a dad. You know anything more about this Javier fellow? He's a legend. He smuggled socialists, contraband. Recently, he had seven kilos of TNT inside biographies on Skawan. Why is he so hard to find? Because he's the best at what he does. You know where I can find him? Thank the gods of chaos that you've got a great buddy like me. You should talk to Forman Romek. He usually recruits day laborers in the Povista district. He knows everybody there. Thanks. I'll head off. Not so fast. Have you been to Povishla since you got back from your travels? I remember us trying to print some Graham rolls from old Marciniak's stall. Me too! He sicked his dog on us, and we had to jump in the Vistula. Ligia saved us. Ligia would rather have saved that dog. Stuff goes on there that make your blood curdle. The locals can't stand outsiders and protect their own. Don't go around grilling random people. Thanks. I can handle it from here. Your coffee. Morana, hello. Let's see what brought you here. I felt something. Where is it? Please, step back. This is a crime scene. I can see that. Am I wrong? 
Or does the deceased have no eyes? Yeah, no eyes, all right. And why would there be? He's the fisherman's sixth victim. Hey, Rogulski, cut the chit-chat. And you, three steps back. Go on! Is the fisherman some local criminal? Get out of here while I'm still asking nicely. Easy, I'm going now. I don't want to bother you. Just what I need. A fucking throng of onlookers. Move a little to the left, will you? You are blocking my view. What are you doing here? Drawing an illustration for a newspaper? For myself, as a local artist. I'm Cayetan. Do you specialize in still lives? Yes. You might say that. Here in Povishle, nothing interesting's ever happened. But there you go. Murders with an artistic twist. Very inspiring material. Povishle doesn't seem like a pleasant place to live. Is life itself pleasant? I don't think so. Even those mutilated bodies, they have no eyes. As if the murderer tried to say there's nothing to see here. So you're saying that nothing matters? Exactly. Once misfortune brought me to this river, I wanted to end my life. But the river wouldn't have me and threw me back on the bank. I decided to stay around. What exactly do you paint? Dead bodies. Someone might say the dead deserve respect. I'm saying that both life and death are meaningless. You are blocking my view. I'll go now. Any fish biting? It doesn't matter. What do you want? My name is Victor. I only wanted to ask what was going on here. With those damn police? They are trying to catch the fisherman. And the fisherman is doing his bit. Is it bad that they're doing the job? And what for? Did anybody call them? Anybody complain? What, do you think murder doesn't bother anyone? Like there are never any murders in Povishle. Big deal. The river giveth and the river taketh away. We'll do fine. We don't need the police here. Who's the fisherman? The one who left the body on the beach. Stark naked, with pebbles in place of eyes, and a hook stuck in the roof of the mouth. Like a fish. That's what he always does. The police call him a serial killer. A dozen people he snuffed out like that already. The son of a gun. You sound like it doesn't bother you too much. And what should it bother me for? If he kills, he kills. We are not to judge if that's good or bad. The river giveth, and the river taketh away. Yep. And they can't catch the fisherman even though he continues to kill. Is that right? He's smart, shrewd, not like those police fools. And everyone knows who he is. How so? Because. You see that guy on the beach who set up his easels in the sand and is painting? He's the fisherman. He paints all those bodies. He's always around the new ones. They even raided that hovel of his. Right, Edek? Yep. It does look 
Suspicious. Everyone says it's him. He's a weirdo, living like a hermit in that hovel. Nothing holds any value for him, so maybe he takes people's lives just for the hell of it. Him? And where is that hovel? Go along the river and behind the workshop. Am I right, Eric? Yep. Thank you, gentlemen. Happy fishing. Yeah, right. Nice rocks. They smell like downtown. What are you sniffing around here for, Outlander? I try not to cross anybody. Weaklings shouldn't venture into Povishle. Maybe he's the murderer. The young master was bored and came to Povishle for a taste of gore. He'll taste it all right. His own. Hey, you can't be here. Uh, Kayetan doesn't allow it. I don't like you, Sonny. He's got nice shoes, though. What if I pay you for the tour? Kayetan pays regularly. Where does he get the money for painting and your services? What do we care? He just does. The point is, he shares. 
I think we can accept a donation. But I still like your shoes. <sighs> Is the painting finished? Nope. The police took the body before I could finish. But I'm sure something new will appear soon. Can I ask you a question? Whatever. I think painting those bodies has become something very important to you. I hadn't thought about it that way. It seems it has given your life a new meaning. Do you really think so? Aren't you afraid you might be arrested? You're always the first one out of the body. You paint it. To me, you look like a murderer. Me? Why? The bodies appear on their own. Besides, let the police worry about that. If they catch the murderer, there will be no more dead bodies to... pose. Right. I hadn't thought about that. I... don't understand! It seems that while contemplating the lack of sense in life, you did find something you care about. Right. But that doesn't make sense. Why is it that, in trying to go with the flow, I end up paddling harder. Where did I go wrong? Beautiful. I wonder if you developed it when you tried to kill yourself, or if you had it before. It is your doubt, your resignation, your nihilism. It's time to free you from it. Can you hear me? Take a step back from him. What? What are you doing? They're arresting me, that's what. 
You've got the wrong man, Pelevin. That is up to the examining magistrate to decide. Let's take him. Tell them what you told me. You are not the killer. What difference does it make? Pelevin, you know he's not the one. What can I do? This case is taking too long anyway. How are you going to sleep after this? I'm going to buzz it up till I fall asleep. Preferably in moonshine. And now it starts to rain. Get it away from me! I don't want to touch it. Yellow belly. <laughs> Shut up! Hey, you! What do you want here? What, what is that you're playing with? It's a hook from a real dead man. A dead man's hook. Quiet, you dolts! This hook is from the fisherman's victim, isn't it? So what if it is? What's it to you? They've already caught the murderer. What if I tell you that they didn't? That they caught the wrong man? The fuck they did! Get lost! Unless... we trade for it. Got anything interesting to barter with? And what would you like for the hook? Uh... a cannon. A saber! Well, you heard him. If you bring us a cannon or a saber, we'll give you the dead man's hook. That should be doable. There were some old blonde sabers in Father's office. Go away now. You're boring. I felt something. Where is it? Hey, Valush, look what they cut dragged in. God damn. Are you the ones disturbing the dead and strewing the bodies all over the graveyard? No, not that. We are professionals. We've got the troublemaker here. I bet he'll call the Undertaker. That's too bad. Are you from the anti thaumaturg Society? We don't care if they're magicians or not. Uh, Steve is a Steve. The Gravedigger will be surprised to see all this looting. Fuck, I knew Thursday would be no good. Don't be a sissy. It'll be all over soon. 
I'll take the coat. I'll take the cloth hoppers. I felt something. Sweet Jesus, don't scare me. I'm just here to see if the dead are lying down as they should. I searched the area. Grave robbers are more of a separate issue. But I learned something about the rising corpses. I'm dying of curiosity. Do you understand? It seems that the corpses are helped in the wanderings by someone who knows the cemetery well and keeps their tools here. Hold on. My hands are clean. And is frustrated by how little you pay him. Lech, he's my assistant. Are you saying he's involved in this? Yes. Where can I find him? And he probably drinks with those friends of his own in Green Square. That louse. If you meet him, tell him he's fired. Goodbye. Good luck with the WAS, you know? Let me know when you get rid of them. Which one of you is Lech? I am. What's your business? Digging out the cemetery at night. I know you're the one digging up bodies from graves. Valush and his crew are also friends of yours. What? I have no idea who you're talking about. Maybe he's drunk. It's some lunatic. We have no choice, fellas. He's asking for a beating. Ugh! <sighs> 
virgin, save me! What do you want from me? Why do you disturb the dead? Aren't you ashamed? I won't do it again, really. But it wasn't my idea, I swear. They told me to. And as for Valush and his people, they're tight with the carpenter. He builds coffins in the nearby yard. Who told you to do it? Oh, this one guy. Konechne. Vojimiej Konechne. The head of this whole WAS. Where can I find the WAS office? You need to walk down from the cemetery. 10 Monarska Tilna Street. People won't find out who defaced the graves of their loved ones on one condition. Thank you, God, thank you. What do you need? I need you to tell me something. Why did the Vojimish make you dig up the corpses? Well, the way I see it, he wanted to scare people. And it worked, didn't it? I think I need to have a chat with Vojimish. Oh, since you're going there, can you tell him I'm still waiting for the money? He said he'd get it from membership fees, so he can't say he doesn't have any. Ligia? You finally came to talk to your boring sister? Talking to you is the greatest treat this house has to offer. I should enjoy that privilege more often. Finally. You're talking sense. In fact, I've got something to propose. Interested? Always. <laughs> I'm giving a lecture at the Flying University. It's a very informal educational initiative. Not to say secret. And an important one. Especially for women who can get an education from us, which they are legally prohibited from doing in the partition. I'd like you to come with me. What's the lecture about? The economic aspect of the woman's question. I've gathered some interesting data and managed to get some great sources from France and England. I'm sorry I asked. Come on, those two brain cells you still have will appreciate a break from booze and trouble. Come with me.
Of course I will go. I will be honored. No questions or bargaining? Who are you and what have you done to my brother? If it's important to you, there's no need to persuade me. That's strange, but nice. The university is meeting in the antiquarian bookshop across the green square. Which brings us to the most important thing. Everyone brings something sweet, so I ordered some donuts from Mrs. Yagoda. The best ones. And the best donut is filled with... All through our childhood we went to her for pastries. Has anything changed there? Nothing at all. And Mrs. Yagoda continues reminiscing about you. No. Yes, you were the only kid in her career that ate eight donuts, threw up, and came back for more. <laughs> so, what about the filling? With plum. Now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Get those donuts, will you? <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Are you lost? Fuck. Don't try to be a hero, and it'll be all right. You're outnumbered. I'll forget I saw you if you just leave this place. Somehow. I don't trust you. Do we get him? I'm just trying to spare you from disgrace. Get off my lawn! Victor? I heard a noise. Are you alright? I'm fine. We've had a few unwelcome visitors. 
Burglars? What's wrong with this town? I'll call Uncle. There's no rush. I don't think they'll try to rob anyone any time soon. Have you been feeling tired lately? Yes. Have your wives been hysterical? Your chickens getting sick? Milk going sour for no reason? Yes! That's all caused by tempermancy. Curses, black magic, evil energy. You don't believe it? Here's proof. Ever since that Tempermancer was buried here, the dead have been rising from the graves. It's a sign that the apocalypse is coming. For more details on the rapidly coming end times, please visit our office. Are you the one giving orders to the WAS? Look who's here. A magician Tempermancer. The enemy of humankind. The ruiner of good fun, and the vanquisher of children's smiles. I'll ask again, who is in charge of this circus? The President told us what you are. If you want to ask him about something in person, have a look at the brochure like the others. You know how to read, right? If the cemetery is sacred to you, why don't you explain desecrating other people's tombs? This is all your fault. The black energy has polluted this earth. The dead are outraged by it. We need to ward off the evil powers. I see. So I'll need to look for reasonable answers someplace else. You have no right to speak. You have no right even to stand here on hallowed ground. I must disagree with some of your points. Like what? Wives are becoming hysterical. There's a simple answer for that. If I had a half-witted husband like that, I'd lose it too. Better go home and think about whether you're catering to all of their needs like real men should, rather than running around these rallies. You! When was the last time you took care of your wife properly? I... It's been a while. Um... I'll go apologize to her. Actually, I'll go too. To my Halincia. What have you done? Who am I going to speak to now? Fill out forms A1, B, and D12, pay the entry fee. Hey, he's a magician! Who's the head of this shit house? I am. Ujimiusz Konieczny, chairman of the Warsaw anti thaumaturge Society. And you are either extremely insolent or stupid to come here, Tempermancer. Well, well, if it isn't the troublemaker from the cemetery whom I have beat the shit out of once already, in the presence of the press to boot. What are you doing here? 
My papa liked the word Tempromancer. He was very hopeful it would catch on in Polish. I'd love to see his face right now. Can you get to the point? Let's talk like civilized people. You can't talk to magicians. They're non-human, like the vampires prowling the cemetery. What do you want? I've heard that your contributions, including entry fees, are spent on things besides brochures and banners. Oh, what else then? On helping hands that dig up coffins at Bovonsky Cemetery at night. What? Voldek, let's get out of here. I withdraw my candidacy. Did you come here to ruin me? And now I'll take a look around. Don't try any tricks. I felt something. Where is it? Hello. Hello. Can I help you? Do you roam cemeteries and fight vampires too? What? No, I'm new here. They've only had me paint some banners for now. I've seen them. I can tell you're talented. It's just doodling. I won't bother you anymore. Is there anything else you want to ask? I know about your little secret. You don't work here out of passion, do you? Is it necessary to enjoy one's job? You work for someone else, don't you? For the Russians, not the WAS. You must be crazy! I don't snitch to anyone! Leave me alone! I won't bother you anymore. What do you want, Tempermancer? This society of yours is funny. You must not deal with many actual problems in your lives. You're the real problem. We're fighting for a world free of such vermin. And soon, we will win. No one will fall victim to Tempermancer magic anymore. Who's the woman in the photograph? Is this your wife? Yes. Let's leave it at that. I will not talk about her, especially with someone like you. She suffered enough because of people like you. I know she left you. She preferred someone else, a thaumaturge. He put a spell on her. She left me and the children. That damn magician destroyed my family. Almost certain the reason she left was different. You went to great lengths to orchestrate the whole story. About a dead thaumaturge whose evil energy causes the corpses in the cemetery to rise. I just brought attention to a genuine threat. 
I demonstrated what might happen in the future if we kept burying Thaumaturges among normal people. Says who? A friend told me. How dare you explain how the world works to me? Do you think you're better than me? Now we're talking. I can see you wrote a book. I wonder what sources you used. My own experience. This is all based on real life. Thaumaturges, social dregs with minds twisted by magic, take revenge on random people for the subconsciously perceived suffering. I know some people with twisted minds. They hire people to dig corpses out of graves. It's interesting that even the World anti thaumaturge Society doesn't want to have anything to do with you. Everyone knows they've been infiltrated by Tempermancers and Dragon Serpents. Otherwise, they would listen to me. Ah, the Dragon Serpents, yes. That explains it. You're responsible for all the suffering in this world. For war and hunger. I know, even though the authorities hide it from us. But soon, People will see the truth, and admit I'm right. What you're saying is very dangerous, for you as well. There would be so much less confusion if you didn't carry it within you. We can still fix it. Oh. What did you do to me? I've rid you of something that was controlling you. The overgrown flaw related to fanaticism wasn't letting you think straight. What do you mean, Rid? See, you no longer feel the heat of hatred. You don't have to fight anymore. You can breathe easy. I want you to go now. And I don't want to see you ever again. I promise. Unless you commission more digging. Just here to see if the dead are lying down as they should. First of all, the WAS won't mess around here anymore. Did you send them to hell where they belong? Hell will wait for them a little longer. We made a deal. What? So they'll get away with it? Where's the justice? Ugh. But now that it's all over, would you be so kind as to make a donation? For the cemetery, of course. And to make sure important notices reach you as quickly in the future. I'll be gracious. Please write a letter to my sister. She'll send you a check. Thank you for looking kindly on an honest man. If you do expire someday, I'll get you the most exquisite hearse. God bless, Mr. Shulsky. Salut. Salut. Have you heard this fancy pants? I've got the saber I promised you. Is it real? Come on then, let's see it. 
If we like it, we'll give you this silly hook. Yeah, I honor my agreements. It's real! Look at it! A real cipher! I also honor my agreements. Here, the dead man's hook is yours. So, what now? Now I'll examine the hook and keep looking for other clues. Patrick Elixpital for the coppers. Shut your mouth, or you lose even more teeth. I'll help you. Come find me near Antiaja's brothel. We can resume the investigation there. All right, enough of this. Let's leave this place. Then I tell him, stick that rubble up your ass. I've got my honor. You sure are a canny lad. Hello. I'm on my break. Come back later. I sent him, Auntie Clara. We're doing an investigation together. You're always up to something, Piotrusz. What investigation? What are we doing here? What do you mean? The aunties are the key to the world of information. They know and hear more than anyone else in Povishle. Are you his actual aunt? You really are a tourist. Of course they're not. But I prefer them to the real ones. They always help me somehow when I'm in trouble. They'll dress a wound, give me an apple, or a beer. Piotrusz, Piotrusz, nothing gets by you. You remember that lady's gloves? I said I liked them once, and he brought them to me the next day. Well, just say the word. What do you know about the fisherman? All I know is he's in jail. Finally. This cursed place can breathe a little. He's not in jail, though. We're looking for the real one. Piotrusz. Is that the investigation you're playing? What do you mean, playing? We are both dead serious and committed, Auntie. You better watch out. You'll get in trouble. What next, partner? It's not over yet. Now, we split. You go grill the other aunties, and I'll see you later. After dark, some of them work here, and others in the streets. Remember to tell them I sent you. Piotrek Justa, that is. And ask better questions this time. Watch him. If anything happens to him, it's your fault. Is the gent looking to forget his worries for a while? Discretion guaranteed. I haven't had an angry wife come here yet. Are you the owner of this establishment? Of course, precious. Welcome to Auntie Yaja's body house. Tell me about this place. All right, precious. Ask away. Are all the girls local? I know places like this offer lodgings to those arriving in the city in exchange for their services. If you're implying something precious, I can assure you that all the ladies here work of their own free will. Imagine coming here to be a cleaner or teach children, and then the only thing anyone really wants to pay you for is your ass. 
I'm the reason they can make a living. No offense, precious, but you have no idea what it's like. Does Piotr Kjusta live here too? That one always finds his way around. He's a nitwit. The girls like him and he likes them. As long as he knows his place, he can hang out here. Where are his parents? Who knows? He's a foundling. Let's change the subject. Finally. Shall I find you a companion? Thank you. Maybe I'll return later. You're blushing, precious. Well, goodbye then. Good evening. Good evening. What do you want? I bet he's a customer. Do you want to put him off? How do I know if he's a customer or not? Bad things happen in this weather. You're right. What brings you here? What do you know about the fisherman? What an odd question. Unless... God, it's him. He came to kill us. But they just got him. That freak who painted corpses was the fisherman. He created inspiration for himself. Right? Take it easy. I was sent here by Piotr Kjusta. Somehow I don't believe you. Maybe you got him too, fisherman. Piotr introduced me to Auntie Clara too. I assure you they're both alive. I just want to talk to you. Well... If you hang around with Piotrek, you can be the fisherman. Especially if you aren't that handsome. This is Auntie Clementina, and you can call me Auntie Anastasia, like the Tsar's daughter. But we don't know anything about the fisherman, and we'd rather not talk about him. I'll be off now. To bed. I felt safer with you around. Good evening. Cloud behind the corner, five kopecks. Naked in a bed, fifteen. A blow will cost you three. Unless you just want to watch something, then it's two. If it's something else you're after, you can fuck off, or I'll call for help. Does it often rain here? It seems like a cloud bursts just over Povishle as if on purpose. I guess the weather reflects the way we all feel here. Stop talking to me, the panda is getting angry. Who's a panda? Well, a harmonger. Piotr Kjusta sent me. He's a nice kid. Piotr sent you? Well, why didn't you say so? I'll give you a discount though. No, um, that's not why I'm here. I just want to talk. Well, fire away before someone is sent to us. The fisherman. Have you heard anything about him? Only the things everyone's been prattling on about. But if it's information you want, buy yourself a newspaper. To copy us. Any other questions? Or should we get to the point? I'll let you get back to work. Goodbye. Who was the last victim? You must know their name. I do, but you don't have anything to convince me. Is there anything else? 
I got the hook from the victim's body. Local kids have stolen it. I already have a few of these. Because of it, I know, let's call it, the scent of the murderer. The thermotage could be useful in a case like this. But the case is closed. That's enough. When I get sober, I put you in jail, I swear. Now leave me alone. We'll see about that. I'll find out why you're so reluctant to run this investigation, and then we'll resume it together. What? You're going to cast a spell on me, magician? Who knows? Don't go anywhere. I felt something. Where is it? Of all the giants in Povishla, you walk into this one again. You won't give up that easy. Deep down, you're not that kind of man. Tilting at windmills has dimmed your investigator's instinct, but you won't give them the satisfaction. I don't have the strength. I do. Let's bring this case to a close. Let's find the real fisherman. You're right. The dubber is innocent. I'm not going to fall in with a heartless system where all that matters is the quarterly performance. Come, I'll show you the body. It's still in the ice room, unless the pallbearer took it. I'll tell you the rest of the story there. Viktor Shulski, Thaumaturge. Antonio Nigorevich Pilevin. Lead the way. I hope I don't regret it, Thelma Terrace. There he is. Tadeusz Pielecha, a Powiśle man, childless, 46 years old. He was a fisherman. No, Tomatork. Zadzela. He has multiple wounds and bruises. Yeah, he was tortured before he died. But the immediate cause of death was a strong hit to the back of the head. Stunt like a fish. It's a joke. I presume it's his trademark. Yes. He always puts pebbles in place of gouged out eyes. Ordinary river pebbles, probably collected at the local wharf. Any personal items? Something could have been imprinted on them. His emotions, thoughts, anything. All he had was his wedding ring. 
But we gave it back to the widow because she was crying that she wanted to have a memento of the her husband. We should ask her to show this wedding ring to us. Where can I find the widow? She lives in a house on the corner, between the marketplace and the Aja's brothel. Pyloha wasn't the fisherman's first victim. What about the others? There was another fisher, a porter, a traveling saleswoman, but this is our best clue. Were other victims from around here as well? Some spent all their lives in Povishla. Others were passing through, and they were just unlucky. Then it's certain the fisherman lives in the area and knows it well, which means he probably also keeps his victims somewhere around here. And then just drops them on the bank? Hmm. Did he have a family? We only know about the wife. They didn't seem to get along. All right. The autopsy is over. When did Pileha's wife report he was missing? She admitted she was worried her husband had been gone for three days. She did take her time. Maybe she was the one who killed him. Why don't you talk to her? If you need me, I'll be at the moonshine. Are you a night owl too? I can't sleep with this downpour. What are you selling? My late husband's junk. I don't need to look at all of this if I can't look at him. I'm sorry for your loss. No point brooding over it. The river giveth and the river taketh away. Do you have any valuables to sell? Like jewelry? What jewelry? Look at me. I had Pieleha's ring, but I sold it to a pawn shop. Money don't stink, you know. They didn't want anything else anyway. And where is this pawn shop? At Brovarno Street. But it's probably closed at this time. I have to go now. Goodbye. Sneaking up on us. Do you know Tadeusz Pieler? Poor guy. He was the one the fisherman got this time. You shouldn't say bad things about the dead. But? Pieleha came to visit us, our Bowie house, the day before he died. He wouldn't pay, so... And Yaja, the madam, had him thrown out. Thank you. I will talk to her. I've had it. Let's get out of here. I'm not going to stay here any longer, getting wet and tempting fate. Let's go. Yaja will get over it. of Piotrusius, you can ask, just be discreet. What about Tadeusz Pielecha? Do you know anything about him? What a miserable chap. No one could ever cheer him up. It must be really hard for his wife now. A friend of a friend saw him in a moonshine often. A local joint. I know where it is. Anything else? Thank you for being willing to talk to me. Goodbye. Give my best to Piotrus. Hey, what are you up to? Bothering the lady? Nothing comes for free. I know she doesn't have it. So here, I'll pay for the conversation. Well, all right. Of course, I'll add something extra for the misunderstanding. Very good. Well, then, have a good night. And you, get back to work.
Let's wait. About its in the underworld. Who would have thought? Right, right. Let's wait until... So, let's kill some time. Hello. Hello, hello. How can I help you, sir? Are you buying? Pledging? Art, cards, old farts, top coats, key, jewelry. Do you remember Mieszko Setsemin? He was a lone shark around here. And you're asking me because? No reason. Setsemin died a long time ago. They say someone attacked and shot him. Terrible tragedy. Terrible. Even talking about him might bring bad luck. And so... Life goes on here in Powiśle. I'd like to see your jewelry. Gems, bangles, spangles. Wedding rings, golden. Uh-huh, congratulations. Preferably from a stiff. I know you've got one here. What does a magician need a ring like that for? I've already told you, I'm getting married. I do have one. But it's not for sale. It brings me luck. Can I just take a look at it? No looking. I'll be back. No need. Can you feel it? It's the smell of mystery. What now? I really want that ring. I said I wouldn't sell it. You can feel evil energy creep out from every corner surrounding you. You're afraid you might be hexed. You don't realize you bring bad luck on yourself. How so? Don't you know dead people's things, especially personal items, attract restless souls? Can you hear the whispers? Is it the wind? It's strangely cold here. Take this cursed ring away from me. I don't want it. I'll happily rid you of this potential curse. Partner. The key says you two work together. Is that true? That's right. At least he doesn't drink as much as you. You know it. I'm the only reason this investigation's going anywhere. If only they gave me some sort of badge for this. That sure would be something. 
How are things? Have you got anything new? Let's recap. Did you ask aunties like I told you? Don't interrupt. I retrieved Bileha's ring. He left his last fearful memory on it. Who's is in the sky? What is he? Crazy? Good luck with information like this. Anything else? I found out Bileha got kicked out of Antiaja's brothel. That's what happens if you refuse to pay. I should give it a good look. We're standing in front of the deceased's favorite joint, supposedly. I've heard they've got some decent beer in there. I bet you have. I'll be off now. Let me know if you find anything. You're not from around here, I can see. Hello. Is this a bad time? It is a bad place, fancy boy. It is for the locals. Is it the weather that has this effect on you? One more word, and we will take you out. I'm a friend of Tadeusz Pileha. I know he liked spending time here. Bullshit! I knew Tadek, and I did not see you at the funeral toast. That's why I want to make it up. To Tadek, and to an easy death. All right. Come in. Just be good. What can I get you? It's nice in here. I like the decor. Why the moonshine? It sells best. We've just run out. Have anything else to say? I know Tadeusz Pielecha liked to come here. Wouldn't you rather have a drink? I... I don't feel like talking about Tadek. You miss him, so do the others. You've known him for ages, and now the mere mention of his name tears a hole in your heart. Help me, and I will do him justice. Yeah, it's a damn shame. If he went back to his wife that night rather than here, I guess he'd be still alive. That means he spent his last night here? Yeah, when he left, that was the last we ever saw him. It was pissing down that night, too. And a few days later, he was lying sprawled out on the river bank like a dead fish. Did you talk to him? Tadek did more drinking than talking. He only complained that Yaja had him removed from the brothel. He didn't avail himself of it, and he wouldn't pay for nothing. Other than that, no. He was a man of few words. I suppose you don't have many customers on rainy nights like that. Hmm? Can you remember who else was here? Just regulars. Same as today, some hookers come by at times. Today we've got one copper and one intrusive posh boy, which is unusual. I mean you. Did Pieleha live alone? Yenek, the steel worker, left with him, but he came back shortly after and passed out in the corner. Then a hooker went out, probably to work. Do you remember which one? Clara. She's the caring one. She jumps around with that little shit Eusta. I'll be off now. Good riddance.
Anything new? Where's Piotrek? He couldn't wait until you came. He had an idea and went snooping around with this. Did something happen? I think I know who the fisherman is, but I need to be certain. I'll get back to you. Have you looked around? Any special requests? Who usually plays the piano here? Would that it were only one. We get no shortage of has-been artists here, or them that try to bamboozle the girls into giving them a better price, especially if they're drunk. One of the girls saw it in a pawn shop. It wasn't cheap. Your employees play too? I can find you someone that can tickle the ivories. But that's not what I pay them for. Tell me about this place. Yes? When you send your girls out to work, aren't you concerned about their safety? You must be the reason Anastasia and Clementina came back crying. Do you know how long it took me to calm them down? At least here they are safe. They are safe out there. Is that clear? I've heard that Deus Pilecha came here the day before he died. You're not from around here, precious, are you? What are you snooping around for? A thaumaturg just happened. So has he been here or not? He seemed odd, and he didn't pay, and I value our time, so I had him kicked out. Do you remember which girl he spent his time with that day? Not at all. Can I take a look around the rooms where you receive customers? No, precious. Whoever enters the rooms must pay first. That's the rule. Let's make a deal. You let me in. And I'll settle Pileja's debt. Will five rubles cover it? Ten. Fine. In fact, the establishments of Śródmieście aren't as expensive as my sister told me. Go on. Upstairs with you. Just don't scare my girls. Can you feel it? It's the smell of mystery. Have you looked around? Any special requests? I'm looking for one of the girls, Clara. She left. She didn't say where. She's probably hanging around somewhere with that nitwit Yusta. That's what I'm afraid of.
anything new? I know the fisherman's identity. It's Clara, one of Antiaja's prostitutes. What? So what are we waiting for? Let's get her! There's no time like the present. Is this the place? Yes, the fisherman's hideout. Is the fisherman there, then? I'm not sure. I'll go in first. You can back me up in case something goes awry. I trust you. Auntie Clara, what did you do to the boy? Piotrusz's older friend. I expected this to be only a matter of time. I warned you he would get hurt. Why is he lying still? What did you do to him? For now. He's only sleeping. The little angel. Like the others. Don't be a hero. Or the lad's done for. Let's not be rash. Let's talk. Indeed. Everything would have worked out if it wasn't for this pesky kid. Why are you even doing this? Why wouldn't I be doing this? Why wouldn't I slaughter those stinking sods? My only regret is that I didn't start sooner. Your brother. What is it that he's done to you? Brother? Daft prick is more like it. He raised me after our parents died. Raised me with a heavy hand. I hated him, but I also only had him. You killed him too? I dreamed about it every day. Until he finally died on his own in a stupid accident. Blithering idiot. He managed to take even that from me. The satisfaction of his death. It's not even about my brother this time. It's about this cursed city. You're not from here. Warsaw wasn't kind to you, was it? Kind? Warsaw devoured me. It chewed me up and shut me out. I came here with the hope of leaving everything behind me. I was a good girl. I wanted to find a job and start a new life. I didn't have any prospects. Whoring turned out to be the only option. It wasn't until I finally got the courage to kill my first river stinking customer that I felt that there must be some sense in all this. No, not sense. There is no sense. Pleasure. You know, I hate Warsaw myself. Sometimes I would like to sink this city, but making peace with it is simpler. Enough already! Not another word! You won't hurt him the same way you were hurt because you don't hate him. I have seen and felt how carefree you become in his presence. As if he gave you back moments of childhood that you never had. I'm sorry, Piotrusz. Stop! You are under arrest for the murders of Tadeusz Pielecha, Jagna Bogdanka, Stanisław Pietrowicz, and likely several others as well. What's with the shouting? I can't hear you, you know. I haven't seen miracles like this before. What about the kid? He's alive. Then wake him up and let's get out of here. It really stinks of fish. How are you? Do you need anything? No, no, nothing. I think. Thank you. Would you ever think she's the murderess? No. This is where my intuition failed. I'm sorry for dragging you into this, lad. Nah, forget about it. The risk comes with the job. But 
I guess you'll have to conduct your next investigation without me. How did you end up on this table? I found this dive, and as I was going to get you, Auntie Clara showed up. Then, I don't remember. Hmm, I understand. What will happen to Cayetano now? First, we'll have to get testimony from the murderers. It'll take a while, even if I expedite things. The paperwork alone will take a fair bit of time. I'll call you. I'll be waiting for your call regarding Cayetano's case, Commissioner. Sure. Keep out of trouble. Goodbye. Take care, partner. We did good. Let's go. I'll show you the police station. That wasn't too hard. Nothing can be kept secret from me. How's business? Not bad, thank God. And the advertising fuel sales even more. For you, sir, about one meter eighty, as far as I can tell. Oh, good. It's robust, elegant, and durable. Thirty-five kopiekas. And how's the other digging business? What do you mean? Valush and his friends want to tell you they can't dig up corpses for you anymore. 
They're the reason I'm here. I applaud your idea, but I'm not sure about the people you chose to implement it. You know what? We'll get you the oak box for free. And we'll send you on a trip to the orchard too. Yes, sir. Aren't your legs getting sore? Stupid question. Let's wait until... So, let's kill some time. Please sit down and smile at me. We're dear friends after all. I don't quite follow. I believe we haven't met yet. I really don't know who I am. You're so innocent. Take a look at me. Preferably my eyes. Yes, I've seen you in a poster for... an operetta? Olena Dąbzakrzewska. Nice to meet you. Wiktor Miłożomb Szulski. Well, well. How do you find Rumianceva Suarez? Olena, my beauty. Someone would like to meet you. Please, let's go. I already have company. Go away. This isn't the theater, honey. No need to make a scene. Move it. The lady said she didn't want to. Is it a problem? Two. An unreliable, wealthy bitch and a fool trying to be a hero. Bore. Get lost. Unless you want to solve it another way. I'll make it clear for you.
thank you for standing up for me. Not everyone would dare to do that. I hope they didn't hurt you too much. Why did he pursue you like that? Does it happen often? Fame doesn't just come with splendor and acclaim. It also comes with unwanted attention. Some people think I belong to them because the entire town can watch me. Goodbye. Or perhaps see you later, dear Mr. Shulski. Boss, we need to start over. The whole base layer. What's our stomping cut out here for? You're making my people angry. Can't you see the work is in full swing here? I'm just passing by. Do you have a problem with that? I have a problem with people like you not giving a shit about people like me who work for people like you. And when in fear, then it's workers on the world unite. Why don't you start a fucking revolution? Get lost! We want to earn our daily bread. I'm sorry. I'll get going. If you step in here one more time, I won't be so nice anymore. Kit, take these dingoes and level it out now. Arise, ye prisoners of starvation! Did it, I tell you? You've been for it, fucker? I did it on purpose. Just you wait. We could use some exercise after all that carrying. Are you sure, boss? Tis the final conflict. Let me rest. Let's wait until... So, let's kill some time. It smells so nice in here. Is that vanilla? Vanilla, raisin, butter, sugar, and some more butter. You're in heaven. Can I help you? 
Mrs. Yagoda, it's me, Victor. Oh, I can't believe my eyes. Little Victor, oh my, how you've grown and how handsome you've become. Where is that little cherub who would stand in front of the display, staring at pastries? That gluten is still here. I can't forget your cream pie with cherries. I've been dreaming about it for 15 years. You see, my lovely, the trick is quite simple. It's just a little butter, about three packs of... Excuse me, I'm waiting for my order here. No reason to be angry, darling. Just wait a moment. My daughter is taking the fruitcake out of the oven now. It will be hot. With raisins and orange peel? I'll wait then. <laughs> Are you sure you're not a thaumaturge? Let that be my sweet secret. I'd like to collect Ligia Shurska's order. Of course. Give her my best. And don't hesitate to stop by for a little snack from time to time. Have a nice day. Oi, take the donuts and don't ask awkward questions. Have a nice day. Mr. Shulsky, I presume. <laughs> what gave me away? Your resemblance to Ligia. And a book at your waist. That's an interesting way of sewing up the binding. Let me take your coat. The lecture has already started. Follow the corridor. The professor has already made a judgment. A change for the better? Surprising in this town. Boarding schools for girls truly are a devilish invention. Inequality between the sexes is a real problem that keeps society in economic stagnation. No wonder if half of population cannot take up a job or are not adequately remunerated for their work. We want to study, work, make our own choices. We want all of our lives. Ligia, I'd love to see you on the faculty. You must agree. There you are. Samuel, Cecilia, I'd like you to meet my brother. Mr. Shulsky? The Victor Shulsky? The Thaumaturge? Yes, madam. It is I. Oh, I... I need to talk to you about Thaumaturgy. Ligia has told me a lot about you. I've been interested in it ever since I was a child, although, sadly, I was not blessed with power. Sadly is not a word I would use. Mr. Shulsky, welcome to the Flying University. The University is an interesting venture. Where did you get the idea? Out of necessity. The occupiers control all the academies. They don't allow women to study and don't care about the level of education. And the future Poland will need an intellectual elite. Where does the university's name come from? 
for obvious reasons, we don't have a permanent residence. Our academy is constantly flying between the apartments of people willing to host us. Some also mockingly say we are a childlike and girlish university, as the university was created with women in mind. But the mockery will soon end, because our graduates have already started scientific careers abroad. Are there any known names among the graduates? <laughs> Mrs. Skodowska Kiri, for instance. Our Nobel Prize winner. Let's talk about something else. Of course. Congratulations, Professor. You did great. I did? And what did you like the most? What I liked most was seeing you as a lecturer. Damn it, you and your compliments. I can't stay mad at you. You know that science is your domain, not mine. Still, it doesn't change the fact I'm very proud of you. I'll take a look around the room. Mr. Shulsky, we must talk. It's important. Please find me later. Oh, I think you'll find that the catering tables aren't the only place you'll find something sweet. Give me a break. Uh, only if you brought some donuts. I did. I know one should not stand between you and sugar. You're speaking words of wisdom, brother. Then I will leave you as well. Mr. Shulsky, please meet our students. I also write term papers for the principal school students. Would you like some work? Excuse me, and you are... Viktor Shulsky. You are Ligia's brother? It's great that you came to your sister's lecture. Not all of us have that kind of support. I think my presence here is of no importance. Liga has always been the smartest in the family. You are completely different from my brother. He thinks an educated woman is a disgrace to her family. If he knew I studied, he'd beat me until I was bleeding. We all take some risk. Well, maybe everyone except Polina. W what do you mean? She's Russian, and I'm sure she'll bring the police down on us. I don't know why Dickstein trusts her. Don't waste your breath. Better have an eclair. I was instructed to become acquainted with your lot. Viktor Shulsky, nice to meet you. I don't know if talking to me is the best choice. Polina Nikolaevna Gavrilov. It seems you're not very popular among your colleagues. What did I tell you? That I cast spells to make their pants leak and their ties run? Why don't they like you? Because I'm Russian and every Ruski is an enemy, right? My mother is Russian, so my perspective is different. I understand the political situation. I was born in Warsaw. I love this city. Why did you decide to go to the university? I don't want to waste my intellect on throwing parties and picking the perfect hat. And what do you want? To study law at the Sorbonne. You think it's funny? No, it's just that my mother wanted me to study law in Paris, but I preferred to travel. My mother keeps trying to talk me into traveling. Apparently, that's the way to find a husband. I'll be off now. Can I help you? Tell me about Ligia's studies. Your sister has an extraordinary mind. She's one of our most gifted graduates, and I hope she will join our teaching staff after this lecture. Her arguments are bold and accurate, untainted by social restraints. Oh, and her charisma. Indeed, you are impressed. <clears throat> Is there anything else you want to ask? Thank you. Goodbye.
What is it? Do you need help? So you're on first name terms with someone, huh? How did that happen? Everyone's on first name terms with everyone else here. Somehow, I haven't noticed him giving any other student that much attention. <laughs> Watch it. You're going to get it. How did you happen to start studying? I was helping Dad with business and I was doing fine. So he encouraged me to apply. It was the least he could do for you. I'll be off now. You wanted to talk to me? I've got a whole bunch of questions, and I really hope you can answer them. Check your enthusiasm, please. You and your dress take all of our oxygen. Lucrezia, only feeble men are afraid to be inquisitive. And the Taumaturge cannot be feeble. The power you possess meddles with the very fabric of reality and the most subtle aspect of human psyche. It is... Overrated at the best, and made up at worst. I share your admiration for Thaumaturgy. Too bad people are too ignorant to appreciate it. Hopefully, that will change. The bookseller went mad. Help! Is that your doing? Now you believe in Thaumaturgy? Mr. Shulsky, please don't mind her. Let's go, they might need you. This is tragic! I need to yell about it! Thieves! <coughs> do not tell me what to do. It is definitely the time to be nervous. I'm just saying we can look together. It might be a misunderstanding. Misunderstanding? It's a theft! You! I bet you did it! What happened? The first edition of A Nation Tale is gone. My beloved game exposed to sunshine. Master! Greasy fingers! Oh, what a horrible tragedy. You can't treat me like that. Nobody leaves this place. Either I get my book back, or I'm calling the police. What do you mean? I can't stay here any longer. Antoni, do not threaten my students. They are not students. They are animals. Mr. Shulsky can find your book. How can you be so sure, Miss Cecilia? You are a thaumaturge. You can identify the culprit from the traces of strong emotions. That's not exactly how it works, but still, your knowledge is impressive. Yes, I can do that. Really? And then can you bring eternal misery upon the thief? No, but I can find what you've lost, and I guess that's what you want. Let's call it the minimum plan. That's enough, Antoni. Mr. Shulsky, we'd hope you obliged. I want my volume to be in my display case. Maybe you're the one who has it. I'm not a thief, and I don't have to explain myself. Why do you want to leave right now? I told my parents I was going to church. If I'm not back on time, they'll start to look for me, and I'll be in trouble. Please help me. You can help by searching this young lady. I know subtler ways. Could you give me a personal item, please?
No, she's not the one who stole the book. The trace doesn't match. How do you know? There's no trace of the thief on this item. That lady did not steal the book. I see. I can't open the door. But I can help you with your parents. I know what it's like when your loved ones don't understand your passion for books. I see. Thank you for your help. Mr. Schulski, there are guest codes in the wardrobe. I will let you in there if it helps you to catch that degenerate. That might be helpful. Then follow me, please. Have you found anything? Maybe, although I still need some information. Well, what are you waiting for? Fire away! The large coat belongs to Miss Lucrezia, I presume. The one with the satin lining? <laughs> yeah, no doubt. But I don't know why you're wasting your time on these. I found a men's coat in the wardrobe. One with embroidered initials and wooden buttons. Do you remember who it belongs to? With a worn-out collar and elbow patches? That's Valdemar's coat. You have good memory. Which you are using in a ridiculous way. Why don't you look for the degenerate? Thank you. That was very helpful. I will wait for the results, then. coat with embroidered initials and wooden buttons. It belongs to you, doesn't it? Why do you ask? I think it belongs to the thief. What? No, I don't wear a coat. It's September. I like the cold, and that is not a crime. Leave me alone. What's up, Sherlock? Mystery solved? You're as happy as a child on Christmas Day. <laughs> I like to watch you do something with passion. Who do you think could have taken the book? I have no idea. But I'm sure you'll be fine. You're way too enthusiastic. How many sweets have you had? Don't even ask. I'll be off now. Yes. Who do you think is behind stealing that book? I can't believe that it might be one of us. After all, we all love books. That sounds like the perfect motive. <laughs> Indeed. If I were to steal, I would rob antiquarian bookshops. But it wasn't me. I'll be off now. Can I help you? Do you have any suspicions regarding the stolen volume? I don't believe any of the students could do it. It must be a misunderstanding. I hope you manage to get to the bottom of it. Thank you. Goodbye. I found your book. And what's this? I hope you will find my little plot amusing. The city must recognize the power of thaumaturgy. Enjoy your show. You have earned it. Cecilia. 
I should return to volume. The book, sir, will finally calm down. And then I will have a talk with the author of this letter. Here is your volume. You came back to me, safe and sound. Praise the Lord. I hope it was all just a mistake. No, it was planned. That was obvious. How did you find the book? The book was in the bedroom, under the bed. What a captivating display of power. Shame there wasn't a missing Sogdar too. Now that would be a discovery. Don't be sarcastic. It's the potential that matters. What matters is who is responsible for that mess. Please, don't keep us in suspense. I found the lockpicks that the thief used to open the display case. They were marked with this trace. And that is how you determined his identity? What an exceptional display of thaumaturgy. As impressive as conjuring up ghosts at a seance. I would like to see you say that to Madame Samira. Of course you know each other. You both prey on people's gullibility. Stop, both of you. Please tell us who took the book from the display case. The plot might not be too original, but it was certainly planned. You might be missing the big picture. It is Cecilia who is responsible for stealing the book. <laughs> it's impossible. She was with us all the time. She persuaded Valdemar to use his father's lockpicks and take the book while she remained in your sight. It, it's impossible. Valdemar? It's true, Mr. President. Cecilia said it would be a joke. Do you understand what kind of situation this puts me in? How this affects our reputation? I'm sorry, but it was necessary. I had my reasons. What reasons? Nobody treats taumaturgy like a real science. I had to show its potential. Show what you're capable of. That's enough. That is no excuse. I will talk to you in a minute. Leave us alone. You know I was right. I'm sorry you were used like that. I've had a great time. If all the lectures are like this, I want to be a student. <laughs> I know what you mean. Cecilia's methods are disgraceful, but she does have a point. A lecture by a taumaturge would enrich our academy. Please, consider it an offer. I will think about it. Mr. Shulsky, come in. What's new? I've got some fresh ideas for you. Promising. But you can't keep wearing the same attire. Please, come back to me if you find more inspiration. Meanwhile, I shall attend to my work. Please, excuse me. I won't bother you. All right.
Hello, sweet secret. Do you have a problem, Jinsu? We'll see about that. Do you have any documents? What kind of... The kind that says you can strut around here. This is a fancy neighborhood. Give me your papers. Oh, documents. How about these? They look fine to me. Well, have a good day, sir. Flavor, vitamins and minerals. I don't drink for health. Vodka. I can see you're having a serious debate, gentlemen. Better tell us what you prefer. Gentlemen, the best alcohol to celebrate is champagne. Look at Mr. Larida here. Vodka and beer aren't good enough for him. Let's chase this fussy drinker out. Let's get it. Secrets, not on my watch. Well, well.
is it? There, it's Shulski, our mighty good chum. Victor, good to see you. These two shivs claim you know each other. Is that true? It depends on what they did. Well, just a stroke of rotten luck. I asked you a simple question. Yes or no? Yes, I know these noble gentlemen. Well then, I guess we'll take in three instead of two. Go on! Thanks, magician. Good thing we kidnapped you back then. You're not the schmuck you pretend to be. You're welcome. My grandson, it's you. Help me. These bags are so heavy and I'm not so young anymore. Would you take them to the car for me? I'll help you. Where's your seat? Would you take them to the car for me? And this one. I bet he's in cahoots with her. Grandson? You old crew, where's our load? Probably in these bags. She told you to lock these? It must be a mistake. Help you, Grandma. That's all right, Grandma. That's what grandsons are for. Kick the crap out of him!
grandson. Wait a second. Granny will give you a little something for your trouble. No need, Granny. Well then, take my bags to the train, young man. What's in them, Grandma? Merely a Granny's knickknacks. A family heirloom, so to speak. All right, let's go, or you'll miss your train. Yes, indeed. Or more of those scum will turn up. I raised you well, my grandson. That wasn't too hard. What a day. Let's wait until... So, let's kill some time. Let's wait. Let's wait until... So, let's kill some time. Want to quote me? Then start writing. Here goes a poem. If I want poetry, I'll read some Konopnitska. In Śródmieście, the bastards went on strike. And that's something I don't like. So I grab an axe in my hand. <sighs> this is a serious story. Workers deserve some respect. Shut the fuck up and write. I grab an axe in my hand, and... Victor, give me a rhyme. I'll solve it peacefully with no ferment. That's a shitty rhyme. Thank you, W.S. Mr. Nieditz has no respect for the proletariat's struggle. They mainly struggle with vodka in my bar. I thought the press lived off that kind of scoop. The press has its limitations, W.S., but we journalists at least try to make a change, unlike many others. What was that about? Don't worry. It's just a shitty situation. Do you want to come by for a drink? I can tell you all about it then. Sure. Lead the way. Well, speak. W.S.? Seriously? How lame is that? Anyway, the sewers in the neighborhood were commissioned by Neumeyer, 
But the workers just dug it all up, and now they're on strike or wandering around. And when I send my shivs after them, more flood in. Do something before I kill them all. Wasn't for you. I didn't catch that. It was going to be so great. With the sewers, people would stop pissing on my door, but they just keep digging. Maybe a friend Romek could help. They say he's a good chap. Stop bragging about your adventures. I'm suffering here. You gave him a fat lip, and you got a life lesson. Nothing to get dramatic about. Why are the workers on strike? Neumeyer, their employer, fired a few of them, so the guys got pissed and started a riot. Maybe I could talk to them. Be my guest. Those that were fired are hanging out in my bar and drinking. And those who still have jobs, uh, you can find them in the southern part of the district. Follow those trenches they dug. You won't miss them. So who is that Neumeyer? He came from Germany. Decent fellow. They say he's got some experience in that sort of enterprise. Since when do you regard decent people? Since the sounds of construction keep banging in my ears. The guy has an office on Poznańska Street. You'll see a sign. I'll see what I can do. Good. Whatever makes them go back to work. Whether you do some hocus pocus or send a demon after one of them. I don't mind. How about we come up with some buddy names for us? Great idea. I'll leave it up to you. Man, I won't let you down. Hey, Wooer, stop making faces and buy another round. We need to drink to Neumeyer breaking his stupid face. And where do I get the dough? Besides, I ain't a woo... Wow, wooer. Easy there, or you're going to pop a vein. Let's get some shots to warm us up. Although you've got your lady love for that, right? Go fuck yourself. What do you want? Oi, Janusz, we've got company. Is he buying, or just making a fuss? I'm impressed with the male bonding that you apparently share. It seems so enduring. Magnificent. Oi, Janusz! Is he, like, making advances at us? Uh, too much beard for my taste. Marionic? If he buys us vodka, we can cuddle. Vodka? With working people? Any time, any place, and with respect. It's on me. In that case, all is fine and dandy, my dear friend. Wait, Marianek, wait, it's too much. I mean, too much... Manana. What? Who are you? Really? I'm a journalist from the Courier. I'm writing a story on workers' rights. The Lord has sent you, dear sir. We've just been fired by a fucking capitalist. Gave us the sack, and we can't even afford some aqua vita. Yeah. I wonder who's gonna dig these shitholes now. Maybe Neumeyer will roll up the sleeves of his fancy getup and start grubbing around in the mud. What do you care? You get a new strumpet and won't even tell your friend who she is. Keep your trap shut. We're not alone. Why? He's a grown man. I bet he goes to a body house, too. Ask anything. Don't mind, Janusz. You gentlemen should know it best. Why do these works take so long? Because it's poorly organized. And it all got fucked up somehow. Managing people requires some skills, sir. It doesn't just happen. It's all so slapdash all the time. Why were you let go? Just some bullshit. Nothing to talk about. Doesn't matter why. The point is, we were fired. And now there's a strike. But of course it matters. 
Just between you and me, the vodka is coming. All right, all right. He fired us because he's a crowd and a scumbag. Imagine a ban on drinking at work. What's next? What else are they going to take away from us? So Neumeyer fired those who drank, and there was so many that all the work went downhill. Now there's a strike. It's good that the lads went on strike. Very good. A strike? Sounds serious. Well, after the layoffs, the lads got together and said they wouldn't do double the work. And it all happened thanks to Rudkowski. Here's our leader, a good lad. Yeah, Rudkowski's an angel. You're always scowling at him. Look at him! He picked himself up a little sweetie pie. He doesn't care about the workers' cause no more. Shut your pie hole. There's no gal. So Janusz's new friend, is he ashamed of her or what? How should I know? Back in the day, we always knew when one of the guys had a new girl. And this one? <laughs> Won't breathe a word. I told you to shut your mouth, didn't I? He just keeps boiling. I don't know why. Maybe she's ugly. She's not ugly. I just don't want to talk about it, that's all. He's fucking sensitive like that. As promised, vodka on me. Enjoy. And what is this? There, Mrs. Rutkowska for sweetie Janusz. Janusz, the bastard has swiped something from your coat! I'm only touching. You scumbag! After my fist touches your face, even your own mother won't recognize you. Well, this is negotiation, so let's negotiate. You won't finish the job without us. That's the truth. Mr. Neumeyer? Nicht jetzt. How many times do I have to tell you? This can't be done. It doesn't work like that. That's not how you do Geschäfte. Listen, sir, we won't give up. Either you can take back the men you fired, or you can say goodbye to the workers you've got left. You can build these sewers yourself. You lousy capitalist asshole. Rude! <laughs> this is just gutter talk, not negotiations. The gutter is quite fitting, actually. 
You're building the sewers, after all. Ah. It's a joke. Who are you, and what do you want? A friend asked me to take a look at the strike. Strike? What strike? The strike is over. The negotiations are through, and everyone goes back to work. No. Lads, the strike's still on. We're not touching the work. It's knockoff time until further notice. Maybe now you can spare me a moment? Not here. Follow me, please. I bet you regret those layoffs now, don't you? Better hair. I deal with that kind of aggression every day. I got used to it. Scientist Geld, what brings you here? Why did the workers go on strike? Sir, I fired those who drank at work and everyone suddenly went mad. You're Poland. I don't understand you. It's time to bring this country into the 20th century. In Germany, it's unthinkable to drink vodka at work. So what's the story with those layoffs? I don't like inaction. So when I set new rules and people kept drinking, I gave them an ultimatum. And how much time did you give them to adapt to the new rules? What do you mean? There's action and there's reaction. I set the new rules on Monday, and on Wednesday, I let them go. What you did was stupid. Are you standing up for these drunkards? What, are you a socialist? That's not the point. You can't expect these people to change overnight. What do you mean by aggression? I'm talking about that troglodyte, that ruder guy. These mist curl. What did you do? He smeared my office windows with shit. Scheiße! I know it was him. I know it. I have no proof, but I know it. Can you imagine that gestank? That stink? I'll get going. I had my reasons, mostly concerning work ethics, but there are always many factors involved. This is complicated. You know what it's like. Can I take a moment of your time? Look, Yannick, there's a clown. You want to hear something funny? I'll tell you. Forget it, Rude. Don't waste your breath. No, I'll say it. My sister will end up in the street with five kids, penniless. And there's no way I can help her. Well, do you find it funny? I'm sorry, I didn't know the situation was so serious. How would you know? It's all because of that dickhead Neumeier. I'll kill that motherfucker. The things people come up with. I'll do some exploring.
The telephone. Round about the satellite little hair, the bellows came and chased him right up there. La 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 la. Um, three little kittens, they lost their mittens and they began to cry. Oh, mother dear, we sadly fear that our mittens have gone awry. Tra la 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 la. Hmm. thinking about your sister. I don't want to talk about it. I see. I'm sorry, Rude. That's all. <sighs> Mr. Neumann? Yeah? Nothing, really. I won't take your time. Sehr gut. So Neumeyer never tried to find a solution? German Ordnung stifles the proletariat, you might say? That's what it looks like, and that's what we're saying. I can see I'm not the only one who wants to talk to you. They say you dabble in journalism now, W.S. Show me what you can do. Do you have another joke to tell? Not this time. I wanted to talk. Go ahead, ask. I don't have anything to do anyway. I wanted to know the story behind those layoffs, from your point of view. The story. The story. Sir, this is all bullshit. That's the whole story. You know that Neumeyer banned drinking at work. He mentioned it. But he suggested it wasn't the only reason. Well... There you go. He said it himself. The cat's out of the bag. The drinking wasn't why he fired those people. Then what was it? I don't care. People end up in the streets, families get deprived of their livelihoods, and that bastard plays the angel. I won't have it. None of us will work until all the boys are back. I thought that the Rudy of yours would go at Neumeyer. You would want to smash Neumeyer's head too, if you were him. He's a good guy. He just does what everyone else feels. What do you mean? His brother-in-law used to work here too. Good lad. But he had an unhealthy relationship with booze. And when he lost his job, he went on a binge. Ruda's sister, De Bruckner, has five kids with him. The youngest is eight months old. Now you understand? We won't start working until the lads go back to work. Are you friends with Mr. Fagin? No, but at least he's trying to cover the issue fairly. What the censorship will do with it is another story, though. Do you know anything more about him? Even if I knew, I wouldn't say. I won't bother you anymore. Have you learned anything? Why do you keep calling me W.S.? Because I want you to remember it. I don't understand. You'll understand. What do you know about the workers? Each one has a powerful personal story. They're furious and joined in solidarity. Either they come out on top, or that Rode guy will rip Neumeyer apart. Anything else? Actually, I wanted to ask you myself, about Neumeyer. You scratch my back and I'll scratch yours? Fine. Wolfgang Neumeyer, 
Born 1858, father Klaus, mother Anna, younger son, runs the local branch of his father's empire. What else? He has a reputation as a successful entrepreneur, but I don't think that's valid anymore. He eats dumplings for dinner and doesn't add sugar to his tea. Shoe size 41 and a half. That's quite impressive. Your turn. What do you know? I got to an offer that Neumeyer recently received. Someone wanted to buy his horse with a charming name Bucephalus. Right. Of course it had to be a horse. Rich people are so predictable. No offense. The city still has no sewer system, families end up in the streets, while Herr Neumeyer would rather keep his purebred stallion than secure people's livelihood. That's how it will read. Can you give me that offer? You can't put it like that. What was the man supposed to do? Sell his own possessions to save the company? It's his company, W.S. He got into debt, so he should save it. Contrary to what rich people believe, it is possible to live without a purebred stallion and champagne. Besides, this document is something more. It's leverage that the workers can use to force their demands. It's a change for the proletariat. We have to make it public, W.S. I'll think about it. Of course you would defend one of your own kind, but remember, this is about the life of ordinary folk, those who don't eat oysters for breakfast. Come back to me if you change your mind. You again? What is it? I'm afraid I've got some bad news for you. What is it? I think you should see it. You deserve the truth. I found this letter in Janusz's coat. What? Aditha? And... and him? I'm... sorry. Sweetie? You call that prick Sweetie? You... I'm not gonna stick my neck out for that bastard. Lads, come here for a moment. Let's resume the negotiations. You came to your senses, yeah? Not just me, all of us. Without loyalty, there is no solidarity. Here, here! We have new demands. We all get 50% higher daily wages. 17 times 6, uh, times 6. Yeah, I can do that. And you give Ruta's sister a pension. We must help her. So, times seven, and I will deduct it from my fees. Alles klar. I accept these conditions. Now, get back to work. You heard the boss, boys. Get to work. Done. The wheels are in motion. I'm accepting compliments. I could kiss your forehead. How did you manage to do that? It turned out the strike leader's wife cuckolded him with one of the dismissed workers. Are you serious? Who's the smart guy? Janusz? Or the other one who would hang around here with him? Doesn't matter. The leader negotiated a raise for the rest of the crew, and they left those dismissed in the dust. The proletariat Casanova could have kept it in his pants. Believe it or not, I've been quite busy myself. Listen to this. Spirit King and Phantom Prince. Or better yet, Poet and Pilgrim. Get it? You're the poet and I'm the pilgrim because I've traveled a lot? You bet. And fuck that guy with his W.S. So see you around, pilgrim.
Hello, sweet secret. Nothing can be kept secret from me. Hello, sweet secret. Aren't your legs getting sore? Stupid question. Let's wait until... So, let's kill some time. Well, there we have it. Am I a magician or what? That wasn't too hard.
Hello, sweet secret. Let me rest. Let's wait until... So, let's kill some time. Mr. Shulsky, come in. What's new? I've got some fresh ideas for you. I see what it is you are getting at, but the collection still seems to have some missing pieces. Please, keep looking. We need bold concepts, unusual combinations. I'm counting on you. Meanwhile, I shall attend to my work. Please, excuse me. I won't bother you. All right. Fagin? W.S., it's good that you're here. Did you get my message? Indeed. I need your help. Did someone get upset that you were following him, sniffing after a scandal? No, I've gotten used to that already. This is something bigger. What is it? Have you heard what happened at Vienna Station? No. There was an attack, bloody and brazen, several dead, all of them civilians, it seems. A new group of fanatics have taken credit for the assassination. They call themselves Lechites. The Russians have put Zukov himself on the case. I want to write about it, the truth, but I need help. What did I do to earn such trust? I liked how you handled the case of the Krajewskis and Pietya Alexandrovich. There is no one in Warsaw more suitable for what I am about to propose to you. You flatter me. Enough to get you interested in this case? I've never written an article. How can I help? I'll handle the writing. You focus on finding these Lechites. I want to eliminate the possibility of this being a Russian provocation. I'll interview them. What do you make of this? Zukov. Is he that famous investigator? 
They say he's amazing and very effective. If the Ruskies have got him on this case, it must be the top priority. Anything else? I wouldn't be so sure the censors would allow you to print something like this. I don't write exclusively for state-run newspapers. Have you ever heard anything about Kimichits? I haven't. I only know the character from the book by Shinkevich. It's nothing special. This is my pseudonym for a certain underground publication. I'll admit that I am rather well known in patriotic circles as Kimichits. Congratulations. Keep asking. Who are those Lehites? Nobody knows. They've shown up in Warsaw only recently. This is the first attack they've taken credit for. That's why I want to reach out and talk to them. Anything else? Who died in this attack? That's what's suspicious. Nobody knows. The list of victims has been classified, but I know that they're most likely civilians, random people, Poles. The Lahites fancy themselves patriots, and look what we have here. That's enough for me to start with. So you agree? Yes, maybe I'll reach out to Uncle. Good idea, because you need a pass to access the attack site. They won't just let anyone in. No offense. Do you ever see Vonda? Perhaps I should speak to her. Wonderful. Fine. And when you happen to stumble across a Lahite, don't forget to call me. It's a Shrud Mistia number, 3490. I'm also leaving you their manifesto. I just want to talk to them and write an honest article about them, in Polish. Is that cat and stuff too? You bet. He stirs the beer with his tail. What can I get you? What's his name? Pan Kratzer. I found him on the trash heap and he sort of made himself at home here. Well fed, well groomed. The happiest cat in the neighborhood. You think? Thanks. <laughs> I feed him liver. I think he likes it. He always wants more. Yes, one donut, please. Even if I had any, I wouldn't recommend them. 
But I heard I was supposed to order a donut. Here. It's all right, Yannick. I know him. I was hoping we'd run into each other again, and here you are. Can we speak in private? Come on. Don't move a muscle. Michal, this is Victor. It looks like I owe you a debt of gratitude. Lower the gun, and we can call it quits. You can leave us. Come, Victor. Tell me what brings you here. What are you up to this evening? Is that an offer? Or are you just nosy? I'm curious, that's all. Tonight, I am overthrowing the patriarchy. Will you join me? I'll wait until you're toppling the monarchy. That's probably going to be next week, right? More or less, I'll let you know. Is there anything else you wanted to ask? So these are the famous suites. Underground combat. Are you from the PPS? The friendly neighborhood girl threw you off? I admit, it's a very effective cover. Isn't it? What brings you to this sweet place? You stole the Dutch pomade shipment. I read about it on the train from Vienna. We're famous. Yes, that's true. But I won't tell you where it is, nor what it will be used for. How exactly are you going to serve the course? The PPS has extensive structures. Most members engage in demonstrations or meetings, underground lectures. I know a certain woman who's keenly interested in them. Bring her sometime. Maybe someday. We're part of the PPS Combat Organization. We use more radical methods. Do you shoot as well, or just carry ammo? Want to find out? Is Bergrodbis' cafe frequented only by your sympathizers? No, but the name is known only by a select few. Why did the PPS choose this particular place? It's just one of many where we get together. The beer is drinkable here, and the boys are nice. Actually, something else brings me here. What do you know about the Lehites, the new stars of the revolution? You're asking me because you thought that was your best bet? Have I crossed the line? I'm teasing, you fool. And the Lahites are a slap in the face for those who risk their lives for freedom every day. What do you think about their manifesto? They only did it for recognition. Pathetic, amateurish methods of getting attention. I despise them all. But maybe you can help the lady. Do you know where to find them? Sadly, no. I'm trying to figure it out. Just don't forget to come and tell me. I'll gladly sort them out myself. I'll be off now. Too bad. Stay out of trouble, wizard.
Might I take a moment of your time? Detective Zukov, right? I'm not an idiot. I didn't call you an idiot. I'm trying to stay ahead of the facts. I want to save us both time, which is why I decided to warn you. I'm listening. I read about your 88 London investigation. Impressive. Yes, if Aberlin had been allowed to enlist my services earlier, I'm sure we would have caught that degenerate. At the time, I was only consulted on that From Hell letter, the one with the kidney that was sent to Scotland Yard. But please cease this deceptive flattery. I must inquire, do you have a theory as to why the Ripper stopped killing and disappeared? I didn't say he stopped killing. But that can wait. I'm a thaumaturge. I know. I see the grimoire. I'm envious of your skills. I wish I were able to touch an object and irrefutably claim who it belonged to. You're the relative of a local judge. I can tell by the accent. You and Voronin pronounce certain sounds similarly. I told you, I'm not an idiot. I think I could... Help with finding the attackers, I know. Yes, for the love of God, just don't ask me how I figured it out. I requested a thaumaturge myself, but it will be at least a week before he arrives in Warsaw. So, you're stuck with me. Let's get to the point then. I trust you will share your knowledge with me. When you manage to locate the Lekites, be so kind as to come back to me. Of course. Please tell me, why does this matter concern you? I've been inquisitive ever since I was little. And nosy, that's for sure. Is there anything else? Seeing as we are working together, perhaps I'd like to make things easier for me and be so kind as to issue me some sort of a pass? Nonsense, I would never sign such a thing. I told you, I'm not an idiot. Our cooperation is extremely unofficial. You were never here, and I never gave you any answers. Have you learned the identities of the victims from Vienna Station? The station is virtually impossible to examine during such a short period of time. At least for Warsaw investigators, anyway. And it looks like all the victims were random people. Perhaps some things will clear up once we're allowed to talk to the injured witnesses. I'm waiting for a call regarding this matter. So, there are survivors. I've already said too much. Meeting you was a most interesting experience. Let's do this again when you find the Lekites. May I have a moment of your time, Uncle? Your timing couldn't be worse. I'm swamped with work. This attack at the railway station has the highest priority now. That's what I've come to talk to you about. First of all, keep your voice down. Secondly, I won't tell you anything because I'm not allowed to say anything. And third, are you involved with this in any way? An acquaintance of mine, who cares about uncovering the truth behind this incident, asked me to help track down the culprits. Tell him to leave it alone, or find new friends. If neither you nor Ligia is involved with this, then I won't tell you anything. You're not involved, right? Ligia and I have nothing to do with this, uncle. Swear. I swear. I want to help. I can help. The only thing I can offer you is a tour of my office. Just like when you were little, remember? I have no idea what you... Then shut up and listen. 
Want us to make you a commemorative pass as part of the tour? I can't refuse my uncle. God must have abandoned me. I'm in a hurry, lad. I'd rather you not be here when I return. I beg your pardon. Is this the way to the platform? Yet. No entry. Tishto. Nice we show what happened here. My mind, no. What happened? There was an attack. Dead bodies. For the Niet. What attack are you talking about? The Lahites terrorists. They planted a bomb. Dead bodies went flying all over the station. For the Niet in your budget. Maybe we can work something out. No way! There's an investigation in progress. Detective Zukov himself is supposed to visit here today. No arguing with authority. There's this one thing. Stop bugging me, Poliak. Congratulations, soldier. Exemplary attitude. But I really have to look around here, so if you'll just let me. If the judge himself issued it. Thank you. I will report to him about your stellar performance. But if you were to ask about me, I was never here. Конечно. Спасибо. Let's take a look around. Thank you. 
Detective, are you leaving? Can you at least give me some advice? I would like to be as effective and admired as you one day. Looking for a recipe for success? It's old, ancient knowledge. I'll reveal my secret to you, because I see your potential. You do? Well, it is conscientiousness. A hundredfold. But... Good luck, and remember, I wasn't here. Arik, you were supposed to lock the door! Dizzily, am I interrupting something? You can yell at me later. Let's deal with him. I've already met Arik. How about the rest? Who are you? We are the revivers of the Holy Republic of Poland. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Triune Lord. Amen. You're leaving behind quite a mess. We're about to start cleaning.
is the smell of mystery. Nothing can be kept secret from me. Good day, Mrs. Yagoda. Have you worked up an appetite for a cookie? I have a receipt for order number 149. This must be Mr. Vishnevsky's. Oh, what a delightful name that is. He orders eclairs every week for his wife. But last time, he didn't pick them up. How about I deliver them? I need to talk to Mrs. Vishnevska. You're a saint, child. They live nearby, just past the church. One Plebinska Street. I didn't see you come in. Excuse me, I didn't mean to startle you. This is not the best time for a visit, Mr... I know, please forgive me. I wanted to give you my sincerest condolences. I brought a class. Your husband wasn't able to pick up the order. Thank you. Ignatza. He remembered. As always. Are you from the patisserie? I'm a thaumaturge. I can help find the perpetrators of this tragedy. Well, I would always share these eclairs with my husband. It would be a shame for them to go to waste. Ignatza was very fond of thaumaturges. He met one during his time in the army, the Polish army. I'm not afraid to say it anymore. Do you mind if I look around here a little? Come in. I'll make tea. Have you learned anything? Is there anything else I can help you with? If it's not too painful, I'd like you to tell me some things about your husband. Well, we met right after the fall of the January Uprising. Ignatza was hiding on my parents' estate near Warsaw. He was supposed to escape to America, but... he changed his mind. And now... Well... Hmm. 
Why was he still holding on to this four-cornered cap over 40 years after the uprising fell? One visit from the Ohrana and both of you would be doing time. He kept it hidden. I brought it here yesterday. I also have his saber and two bayonets. Ignatza never stopped fighting for Poland. He corresponded with Piłsudski. These plans have fallen through already. Were both of you believers? Ignatza more than me. After what happened, I... I don't know. His last thought remained where he had died. I managed to, to read it. Tell me, please. I'm sure it was about putting Poland back on the map of Europe, right? No. I don't know where the boat he'd been thinking of was, but he mentioned a summer afternoon by a peaceful lake and a wreath of marigolds. God! And she was there, beautiful, magnificent, the only one. Thank you. Thank you. I'll let you be. No. Thank you. Do you think you're going, know it all? Oh, we're running a business here. It's you. What do you know? Please, please help me. I only ask these kind gentlemen for directions. To Albuquerque, is that right? Are you done? Look at them goddamn bigwigs. You're not gonna make fools out of us, you clown. There is no such thing as Albuquerque. Albuquerque! Shut your mouth. We can forget the whole thing if you drop your wallet. You can chip in too since you popped up. I don't think so. Come on, I'll sort you out. This one's lost it. He's asking for it. Are you sure? One against three? My good man has obliged me to ask. Would you like to help me? Me? I saw people fighting once in an Albuquerque saloon. Adversities toughen you up. Indeed. was very educational. I haven't felt so alive in a long time. Thank you. I just hope you won't relish street violence now. No, no, I, I still need to get to Albuquerque in one piece. Thank you again for your help. Walter Pinkman. Viktor Shulski. I don't want to worry you, but Warsaw is not on the way to Albuquerque. It depends on how you look at it. 
If it wasn't for you, my journey would have ended here. Thank you again, Mr. Shulsky. Excuse me. Could I interrupt you for a moment? I'm with a patient. What do you want? I'm investigating the attack, and I need to ask you a few questions. What agency are you with? May I have a word with you? Yes, sir. I brought her teddy bear. Please, give it to her later. That's nice. Although, you know... I know that this won't bring back her mother or her eyes. Still, thank you. What do you think she was doing at the station? I can surmise that she and her mother had either just arrived or were about to depart. Stefania Lipnitska. All I know is that she died in the attack. <laughs> How's the young patient doing? She finally fell asleep and is a lot calmer now. But unfortunately, we couldn't save her eyesight. For a while after the operation, she would cry out for her mother and her teddy bear. The last thing she saw was her mother's death. What else would you like to know? Maybe I'll return later. Hello. What is it this time, and where are my things? Give me back my clothes already so I can get out of here. Unless you want to shove a thermometer up my ass again, let's have it then, because I'm drowsy and morphine. I'm in pain. Are you even a doctor? You could say I'm a doctor of souls. Like a priest. Is there something you wish to confess? You're no doctor. What the fuck do you want? Well then, how are you feeling? Sleepy. You're boring me. I know the station is your doing, Leihait. I don't know what you're talking about. How about that morphine, then? I'll leave you alone, for now.
I'm glad I caught you. I see you feeling better. Well, it seems I'm a lucky guy. What is it? Why won't you open up to me? After all, you want to send a message to the entire world. You want everyone to hear about you, to admire you. Do you know who Kmicic is? He's eager to write about you. In Polish. For a Polish underground newspaper. About the heroes of the self-proclaimed struggle against the occupiers. What are you on about? Do you know Kmicic personally? Yes. He can't wait. Is that so? Well, I might be able to tell it to some people, and some people will give you our answer. Where and when can we meet? Calm down, magician. We'll reach out to you. What's the noise? Over here, young master! Just look at this young master! Brigandage! For God's sake, young master! What is the meaning of this? This is the message I've been waiting for. Telephones exist. I'd better sweep it up before the young miss sees it, and then I'll call a glass worker. I won't tell her. This'll be our little secret. Indeed, exactly. The things people come up with. Please connect me with Fagin, the editor. Śródmieście 3490. Yes, I'll hold. Thank you. Hello? It's me, W.S. Have you learned anything? They reached out to me. I'm keeping the brick, but someone should compensate me for the window pane. I'll install it myself. My father was a glazier. Do you know where our bloodthirsty patriots are hiding? We're supposed to meet in Pavishle near the market. They'll have a carriage waiting. I'm on my way. And I'll think about whether I should notify somebody else. Detective. I'll admit I didn't expect you back so soon. I want to ask what you think about the Lehite's motives. Do you see them as significant? Their motives are inconsequential to me. The effects of their methods do a lot to undermine them. What you want to know is what I think of Poles who fight for their country in this way. That's right. It's not worth the trouble. To lose or take lives in the name of a notion so abstract as the state. Is that all? The Lehites reached out to me and agreed to a meeting. 
in Pavishla, near the market. I'm supposed to get into the carriage they will have arranged to wait for me. We'll follow you. My people will be there before you arrive. See you. Been waiting long? I'm a journalist. I can be patient when I know I'll be rewarded for it. I see that the carriage hasn't arrived yet. I'm sure they're watching us. Patience. Tell me what you have for me before they get here. I have information for you that may prove useful during the interview. Let's start with how you convinced the Lahites to reach out. This wasn't difficult. I tracked down the attacker. Christian Krul survived the explosion of his own bomb. He was lying in Praga Hospital and is fanatically devoted to the cause. Not bad. And the culprit was right under Zukov's nose all this time. Is there anything else? The target of the attack was Stefania Lipnitska. She ran a foundation on Novogrodzka Street. The Lehites found out that Lipnitska was an informant. She'd handed over members of some Polish society from Vilnius to the authorities. The bomb was meant as revenge. So, this was an attack on her? All other victims were... Were unlucky bystanders, yes. Do you have any proof of Lipnitska's betrayal? I saw a congratulatory letter and a Russian medal in her office. In that case, I can't not write about it. You're doing fine. What else? A veteran of the January Uprising was also killed by this bomb. A Polish patriot dedicated to the cause. A Catholic. That's not bad, but let's be honest. Given his age, how long did he have left? Is that all? You're doing fine. What else? I renewed my contact with the socialists. Well, well. How often do you see Vanda? They want to be as far away from the Lehites as possible, and even go so far as to treat them with hostility. I like this dichotomy. A common goal, and yet, a moral challenge. I would very much like to hear the other side's version. You're doing fine. What else? Isabella Lipnitska, Stefania's little daughter, is at Praga Hospital. She lost her eyesight due to the attack. And you probably want to suggest that I not mention her in the article. The little girl lost her eyesight and her mother, and now she'll be branded as a traitor's daughter. The child has nothing to do with this. Viktor Shulsky, knight in shining armor. You won't be a very good journalist if you allow yourself to feel guilty. But have it your way. This is everything I've been able to find. Incredible. We must work together more often. Does your conscience bother you sometimes because of the things you write? Never, if what I write is the truth. A lot when I write to please the censors in the courier. What exactly do you intend to write about the Lehites? I told you, the truth. I want to know if they're Polish patriots who made a mistake, or if they're Russian provocateurs who want to destroy the socialists. Or if they're just a bunch of lunatics. I think that's for us. Fine. Let's not keep them waiting. Finally. 
<sighs> so, this is the famous Kimichits, the herald of the revolution. We have a lot in common. That remains to be seen. And this must be Mr. Shulsky. Strange company for a socialist. I read your manifesto. If I'm bourgeois and Kmitits is a socialist, what are you? Patriots. Real ones. You will be the first to bring the testimony of the Lahites to the Poles. You will be famous. What did you want to achieve with this attack? To sow fear in imperialistic hearts. To show what fate awaits those who betray Poland. Is this about Stefania Lipnitska? We want to use this interview to expose her lies, her betrayal. Let the people see her true face. She was no Pole, not a true one. According to the Lehais, who is worthy of calling themselves a real Pole? This notion may not be subjective, but rather abstract. Would we have a place in your Poland with Mr. Shulsky? Mr. Shulsky is too much of a Russian, and you, Kimichits, exhibit far too many Semitic traits. But we are not lunatics. We are open to those willing to assimilate. Lipnitska's faults are not commensurate with her punishment. Tell that to those she sent to the scaffold. I regret that we could only kill her once, while she killed many. Lipnitska's daughter will be better off in the shelter. At least now she has a chance to grow into a patriot. And what about Ignacy Vishnevsky, a veteran of the January Uprising? He also died in this attack. Mr. Vishnevsky would gladly give his life for the motherland. The choice of one to make such a sacrifice should have been Mr. Vishnevsky's. Your victims were all Poles. Doesn't that conflict with your postulations? Please, don't twist our intentions. What are the biggest differences between you and the socialists? Because a trusted source tells me that they have a decidedly negative view of your organization. Socialism is our biggest difference, sir. What's going on here? This interview's over. Alyaki, lay down your arms. You're surrounded, detained, and under arrest. I hope you resist. You betrayed us! presence of the esteemed editor. I didn't want to risk losing our advantage, which was the element of surprise. It's all right. None of what transpired here will make its way into the courier, Mr. Fagin.
Thank you. I can't wait to sit down and write. Can't wait for Kimichits to sit down and write, I mean. Can we get out of here already? There's one more matter I would like you to consider. That is, should you have the misfortune of dying before I do, would you be willing to bequeath me your brain for research? I promise I'll consider it. I'll let you know. That's all I ask. And now, be so kind and disperse. This is no place for civilians. Tell me, W.S., in what words would you like to be described? How about W.S.? Who knows? Maybe it's the beginning of a beautiful friendship. I don't think so. And then he, listen, he grabbed my waist, see? Yeah, yeah, what then? And he says, in España, we love a woman's entire body, her entire... I'm terribly sorry, but did the man you mentioned happen to be named Javier? Were you eavesdropping? Scram! Or we'll get our brothers, go on! Excuse me. Fuck off! What's inside? Nix! Fuck off! Do you know Javier? Apparently I can find him in Povishle. You ain't gonna find shit here. I ain't a snitch. Why don't you fuck off? So I'll get my ass out of here then. And Romek? Depends who's asking. I'm looking for Javier. I need to talk to him. Here, our mamas teach us we ain't supposed to talk to strangers. Can we spare ourselves the verbal wrangling? I'm in sort of a hurry. A hurry? Well then, my dear sir, let's make sure you get on your way. To the hospital.
Excuse me, officer. What do you mean, not allowed? Sergeant Kadash, folks gotta work there. Feed their families. We're conducting an operation. More like farting around. My taxpayer rubles are paying for you to chow down on herring. Let me through to the wharf. And what are you here for? What's going on here? What's going on? Incompetence. The pigs had a weapons transport up and vanish on them, and now they're quaking in their boots. You watch your mouth. Nobody's getting in until we're through. I'll keep my head down. The police are conducting an operation in this vicinity. Nothing to see here. Well, all right, I give in. We've been here since morning and nothing. Anybody got an idea of what to do, Slim? Honestly, Sergeant, I don't know what we're doing looking in Povishla. We're conducting a large-scale investigation. Some men here and some at the port. If you ask me, ain't no point. Me, I'm from Povishle. And I'm telling you, all we're gonna find here is vodka and smokes. If the transport got nabbed at the port, we gotta search at the port. Just real intense. A concentrated operation in the most likely area? Very well. Boys, to the port! I told you something that was snooping around. The Flatfoots are gone, but I got a hunch I'm gonna have trouble with you. Interesting hunch. We taking him to Ariel? Nah, we'll do this our way. Ah! 
Enough of this, Narishkeet. Say who you are, and what you're doing on my turf. It's a little crude to shove your way into someone's head without asking. You don't have the guts to look me in the eye. It's better that way. We can talk as equals. I'll put it another way. How come you're pestering me about Javier? Your salutar? I don't know him. He's a devok. He looks around for lost souls who don't know better, and go where they shouldn't. Terrifying. I'm looking for a smuggler. What for? For smuggling, what else? I need Javier. Is that all? I took you for someone else. I can introduce you to Javier. You interested? I know Javier likes to fight. So, should we head to the boxing ring? Something like that. I see you've sniffed out what you can. Shall we? That's all? No extra conditions or requests? Tongue of a devil, heart of an angel. That's me. Who did you take me for earlier? Nothing of interest to you. Eternal neighborhood affairs. Lead the way. You sure changed your tune quickly. Welcome to Povishla. Fighting first, hugging later. Ariel Rafe. Stick with me and they won't touch a hair on your head. Just don't come on Saturdays. Welcome to the dungeon. A mecca of gambling and violence. You see the box above the ring? I'll wait there. Make yourself comfortable. Put a bet on the fight. And come find me. Excuse me, are you ladies fighting here? Yep, Bessie and Alice Gordon from Buffalo Bills. They're a problem? No, not at all. I'm wondering how you ended up here. Getting even. We got a score to settle. Ugh, sure do. With Barstick. That fucker was going with me for a while. Only he didn't mention. He was dating me too. We're gonna jog his memory. American style. With violence. I see. Good luck in the fight. Place your bets, ladies and gents. Don't miss the chance to earn some dough. How about a bet? Who's fighting? You're awful twitchy. You want a spree or angling to rat us out? Who let you in here? I came with Ariel Rofa. If you're with Ariel, it's all hunky-dory. You're in our dungeon here, gent. No rules, no restraints. That's how we play around here. But you was asking who's fighting. Our pride and joy. A real canny lad from right here in Popishla. Barschik. And in the other corner? Everybody who wants to take him on. All of them against one. Sort of a local tradition. So, you bet in there, ain't you? I'd like to bet on the fight. On Barstick or on everybody else? I'll put a rubble on a Barstick. Corking choice. You take IOUs? Sure, why not? Get riding.
You're fretting, Ariel. His hips are fine. Shouldn't you be at home right now? With your husband? And you? What are you doing here? Farsti. Meet Victor Sholsky. He has business with Javier. And he'll do anything to meet him. Anything? Anything. Victor is a taumaturge. And it might make for a fantastic main attraction. What do you think? Sorry, what? What? A magician in the ring? Yeah. Enough kidding around, Barstuk. I know you are Javier. Well, you almost impressed me. Javier Sanchez via Conejito Ramirez. Now that we know you ain't just anybody, maybe you can show us if you're the real deal, or just some stiff from downtown. You getting in the ring? All right. Yeah, I like him. Señoras y señores, a slight change of plans. I won't be fighting. I know, I know. Barschek is the best. But listen. Marcel and his brothers-in-law versus a son of Shurmirsha, a swell, a magician, Viktor Shursky. Don't embarrass me. Victor, the crowd loves you. They love to hate you. That's all right, too. Give them time. Does Victor deserve the neighborhood's respect? Maybe the Chicos from Fifth Alley will make mincemeat out of him. You can do it, Victor. Let's get on with it. Who's next?
Straight from America, they box like a whirlwind and kiss like a dream. The Gordon sisters. Fucker. Try not to get them even more damn riled up. I'm only here for professional purposes. A professional ass kicking. So be it. Let's fight. Shit! How much more? Come on! Smile! Bueno, that's enough for him. Come on, you deserve it. Did you see him? Not such a weak chico after all. How do you feel? I'm in the mood to do business. Tell me, gringo, how can Javier help you today? What was that whole farce for? What for? What for? Because Barstick's got a sore hip. That's what for. Mentiras y calumnias. Get to the point. I need a smuggler. I know, Mago. Say what you need me to smuggle. Who? One lady needs to discreetly leave the Russian partition and get to Vienna. For how much? How much do you need for this? The costs of transportation, bribes, paperwork. She can afford it. Let's just say she's quite far up in high society. A rich chica wants to go to Vienna? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure somebody is looking for this clafter. Otherwise, she'd get on a train. If they catch us, it's la muerte para nuestros amigos. However, fortune favors chutzpah, after all. Al diablo. The river giveth, the river taketh away. Vámonos. Does that mean I'll get a share of the dough? No. We don't like each other that much. So, what's now? Now go get the lady. 
and we'll meet at Port Praga at night. But tell that plafter of yours that it ain't gonna be a tea party. Adios. Hold it, Tempermancer, for I am White Roman. Pardon? You are Victor Shulski, son of Shrutmieszcze. Your family is famous for its powerful Tempermancers. You seem to be well informed. I wonder where your knowledge comes from. It is a mystical knowledge that connects the minds of all Tempermancers. So, you are not denying that you are you. If you're a fan, I'm not one to give autographs. I am a master of Tempermancy, White Roma, and I challenge you to a duel. Everything is at stake. The winner will be declared King of the Tempermancers. If you insist. The memorable moment is here. To me, devoted visitors. To me, salutars. Oh, God.
you also took a valuable and instructive lesson from us. I accept the title of King of the Templemancers. I would suggest that neither you nor your salutor strain yourselves anymore. Your triumph is temporary, Viktor Shulsky. I have not yet said my last word. I will find you when you are ready for the next fight. That's what I'm afraid of. The things people come up with. Sir? My name is Viktor Shulsky. Grigory Rasputin said I could find him here. I can sense he's in a drawing room. Am I bothering you? Not at all. I've just got a few people together who I can assist with their spiritual purification. Have you come to get our friend? Who's crying like that? A sinner, Victor. Bemoaning his poor choices and the temptations he succumbed to. I didn't invite you this time. I know you're in a hurry. Yes, I'll get her out of here. Watch out for yourself, too. Thank you. I hope that you've had a hospitable stay. You have uh, unsettling friends, truly. The Nadarzhinskis are reserved and boring, unlike that uh, Grigory. What do you think of him? I don't. I'd like to leave this place now, if possible. We'd better get a move on. Finally, don't forget my luggage. How many dresses and pairs of stockings do you need? As many as I'd like. I have some very profitable secrets in that chest. Blackmail? Insurance. Correspondence with various people who aren't entirely aware that I didn't burn their letters. Do I understand that this time around I'll be lugging the chest myself? Hurry up! Around this ain't a museum. Head down. That building in front of you. The entrance is around the corner. You pick some very interesting people to work with. What's that? From now on, that's your problem. Entrance around the corner, right? The gentlemen of the gendarmerie like to have fun. I hope you know what you're doing. Did you want a pumpkin carriage and some glass slippers, senora? Smuggling in as romantic as that. Javier, yes? I've outgrown fairy tales. I'm here to make a deal. I left that fucking chest by the door. I could barely lug it. Big as a whale's two heads. We gonna do something or just stand here and stare? The police at the entrance have me a little concerned. Did something happen we should worry about? 
Esos pinches pendejos can't keep their hands to themselves. Someone fucking filched a weapons transport, and now the police are shitting themselves. They're looking high and low, even under hookers' skirts. Somos profesionales. We'll keep out of sight, and it'll be gone, Skeet. So what's the plan? What are we doing? You'll get papers. Austrian ones. Almost authentic, but don't go flashing them left and right. Then it's off to the pier, and onto a boat out of the city. Then a steamship upriver. In Krakow. A transfer to a Vienna-bound train. He'll be there in a few days. Si, sí, bueno. As soon as we agree on the money. Your turn. Tell the gentleman about the compensation. You'll get my whole fortune. The appropriate paperwork will be yours as soon as I leave Warsaw. Toda? All of it? Meaning how much? Enough, so you won't have to lift a finger for the rest of your life. What about the travel chest? Do we have to bring that? Oh, absolutely. That's exactly what I'm paying you for. So, all right. Vamos? If this is going to work, then we need to get going. Ariel, you go to the puerto and call the little captain. La señora will get changed and we'll follow after you. Victor will come too. He'll see if anyone's following us. Что? I do what? What you pay for. Via Candius, my friend. Agita nach, Scheifella. and his people have blocked off the port. That hijo de puta was supposed to be in Povishla. What's the plan, Mago? I might have had something to do with this, accidentally. You just can't help yourself, can you? You made the mess. You clean it up. Hasta Rorna, Victor. Si, con discreción. But if something happens, we shall... I felt something. Where is it? Don't dawdle. Every one of these funny little packages has to get opened, and we're searching every nook and cranny of the baggage car. Good evening, officer. If you say so, hang on. I recognize you. You want to appeal to my patriotic sentiments again? Was I unclear in what I thought about that? Maybe we can unclog your ears at the station. No slacking. I want to be sure we've searched through everything. You're holding us in the rain. The furs are getting soaked, and we're gonna have to pay for it. Russian scum. What? What did you say? Been a while since someone fucked you up with a truncheon, huh? I'll fuck you up first.
But the boat can't hold that! There's no choice. If God wills it, a broom can shoot. Load it up. Vamonos. There's no time. I need another word with Victor. Senora. I wanted to thank you. I don't know anyone who'd risk his life for a stranger. If there's any way I can repay you, just say the word. I don't want anything. I hope you make it safely to Vienna. I'm grateful, but I don't like being in debt. And I also believe you have the right to know. What are you guys lagging around for? Hurry up! Your father moved in the circles of people who shared his views, who would like to see Poland back on the map. Do you understand what I mean? He was a patriot. My father and the revolutionaries? There's no way that could be right. I beg you. Whatever he was planning, it was certainly more subtle and effective than planting bombs in restaurants. I never met them. He called them his coterie. They were all friends of his. He secretly dreamed of creating a force that would give true hope to the Polish people. One that might till the scales in favor of the independence fighters. Loka, quickly! He believed he didn't need a great army, just a handful of daredevils with extraordinary abilities. You getting in the boat or not? I need to go. Your father was a wonderful man, Victor. And you remind me of him a great deal. Thank you for everything. Wait! Who are these people? How can I find them? I don't know. They hide in the shadows. Good luck. I trust that you'll find your grimoire, Viktor Shulski. Adieu. Keep an eye on those bequeathal papers. If there's a problem with payment, we'll reach out to you. Why are you so distrustful? When a poor man eats a chicken, one of them is sick. Amigos. You think they're dead? They had no chance. Clad in clay and the fury of the sons of Israel will arise to crush their enemies. Get out of here. Golems follow blood. The farther away you are, the better. I don't believe it. Salutus can't physically manifest. Tell it to Javier. Look at this guy teaching Kabbalah to a Jew. It was a golem, you schmuck! And it will pursue them, 
until their blood is lost in the abysses of Sheol. You understand? What am I supposed to do to get rid of him? The golem is gonna look for you until he kills you, and all of those of your blood. That is, unless you can figure out why he was sent after you, you must have really gotten under somebody's skin. I haven't done anything to anyone. That means someone of your blood did it. Do you hear me? Ask your blood. Get lost. You're not exactly my favorite person right now. I guess there's nothing for me here. I have to get out of the port. Something's happened on the pier. You think we didn't hear you? Now shut your trap, or you'll get the police on our asses. Yeah, we paid them not to see us, but not enough to ignore these kinds of shenanigans. And what else are you gonna tell them, moron? Your home address? Shut it and pack up. Did you hear that? They're making such a racket, the bosses will come running. All right, playtime's over. Round them up. Don't even think of reaching for your magic book. Fania's pistol has a very sensitive trigger. The second he moves, 
I'll blow his brains out, Chief. Chief, let's do our best not to have Vanya shoot you in the head. All right. All you have to do is tell us where Svetlana Petrovna is. I'm running to a phone. There's been an accident. I think the pier collapsed. Was Svetlana Romansova there? I'm afraid uh, Svetlana is dead. Are you sure? She went down with a boat and didn't resurface. Lie! Victor, I'll be honest with you. That woman was a Gordian knot. I know that she spent years compiling all sorts of compromising material against the Tsar's government. She was a traitor. We were observing her, but she managed to get everything out of her apartment. I need to know if her knowledge could threaten the security of the nation. As far as I know, all Svetlana's secrets went with her to the bottom of the Vistula. <sighs> Should we take him to the Citadel, Chief? No, Vanya. We'll finish this here. Why did you help Svetlana? You first. Why did you kill him? I never liked him. And he shouldn't know so much. Why did you help Svetlana? The emotions linking her to my father seemed sincere to me. I trusted her. What if you were wrong? Maybe your father got together with her because I told him to. Would you believe me if I told you that your father didn't trust her? No, I wouldn't. Quid pro quo, Chief. Where's my father's grimoire? Look for it in uh, Stanislav's circle of old friends. People who could take advantage of a missing grimoire. Thaumaturges. Do you know who they are? Where I can find them. No. But, once you do, don't neglect to inform me. And watch out. They're very dangerous people. I need to get out of here. You're finally here. We've been waiting for you. I'm afraid I was boring your charming sister with my chatter. Ah, oh, nonsense. I'll leave you two alone. You look tired. Is everything all right? Do you need my help? How do you know my address? People in Warsaw know who the Shulskis are. You're quiet this evening. Did something happen? This has been an especially difficult night for me. Is everything all right with Svetlana? Why do you ask? You two left without saying goodbye. Did something happen? I saw a golem. A golem? From Jewish legends? Is it a salutor? Yes, and it turned out to be a very real salutor. A material one. I didn't think that was even possible. And what does it have to do with Svetlana? I'm afraid Svetlana is dead. <sighs> I was afraid of this. Did the golem kill her? 
You could say that. The golem sank her boat by collapsing the roof over the pier. Svetlana intended to live off of selling other people's secrets. Secrets can be deadly. Do you want to know what she shared with me? You're not proposing blackmailing anyone with anything, are you? Nonsense. Of course not. As I told you, I want the world to see my truth. I want to stop the annihilation of countless human beings. But on my own, I am like Cassandra. Yet, with Svetlana's knowledge and you by my side, no one will have any choice but to believe me. I'm intrigued. The question is, can you bear the burden that she also carried? Can you say which secret of Svetlana's you mean? She had a whole chest full of them. That wasn't in the chest. And now it's only in my memory. Will you tell me what this is about? Not here, no. Get some rest first. At our next meeting, at the Narizhinskys. It's safe there, for now. Thank you for stopping by. See you again soon, my friend. One more question. Might this golem cause you any trouble? I'm sure I'll find out soon. I think we need to have a word. How do you know people like this, Rasputin? How long was he here? He arrived shortly before you did. Unexpectedly, he scared Grazina. I received him in the salon so that he wouldn't go wandering through the house. What were you talking about before I interrupted you? What difference does it make? About... Strange. I don't remember even. Sometimes he has that effect on people. <sighs> what kind of person is he? He's that miracle worker I was writing to you about. The one who helped me return to my senses. Not completely, I think. Given that you brought him with you. He just came to see me. I owe him a lot. It looks like he knows you better than I do. I actually barely know him, but he's never yet refused to help me. I can only congratulate you on having friends like that. First Njedzic, now a gloomy hermit. And ladies of the night have started hanging around outside the windows. Are they also friends of yours? Who are those women? Horace Victor, prostitutes. Women of easy virtue, daughters of Corinth, courtesans, moths, hookers, floozies. I've been seeing two girls around here recently. They stand out on the street and peek into our windows. Maybe Abaurisa is playing a prank. This can wait. Ligia, I'm really dead on my feet, but there's one more thing we need to have a word about. I wonder what I don't know yet. Was there anyone who very openly disliked father? More than you? Touché. Hmm. Did he know some sort of thaumaturge who might have been out for revenge? Or did he mention a coterie to you at any point? Did he meet up with other thaumaturges? As far as close friends, I think you already know that's a dead end. And he never introduced a thaumaturge to me. Did you know that someone sent a golem after our family? A golem? <laughs> the kind from Jewish legends? This one was very real. It destroyed half the port while it was trying to kill me. Port Praga? Are you alright? What were you doing there? I helped Fiatwana. She wanted to flee the country. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Do you know what forces you're playing with? You know full well who she is. Who she was. Sorry, what? Svetlana is dead. She was just setting off on a lovely voyage when a golem appeared and... Svetlana is dead. 
We're finished. They'll put us both in prison. What will become of us? What about Uncle Sasha? I handled something for him recently, so I'm sure he'd be eager to help. It's too risky to arrange this through family. And morally dubious. I'm afraid this is outside his purview. Don't worry. Nothing will happen to us. I'll make sure of it. How will you do that? I think Rasputin will be able to help. <laughs> Your magic monk? <laughs> yes, he certainly came across as a genuine altruist. You're allegedly dead on your feet, Victor. Maybe it's time for bed. You haven't experienced anything unusual recently? Nothing so remarkable, given I'm living with the thaumaturge. You think there's any way I'd have let a golem slip by me? How long have you known your chief? What does that matter? So you knew he worked for the Ohrana? Yes. You'd have found in the end anyway, but he asked me not to tell you right away. I understand that each of us has various relationships we're tangled up in. But I think we should start talking about them more often. <laughs> Agreed. I'll only add that a contact like him is very useful in business. I'm guessing he knows how to arrange contacts for you. I'm sure he often invites you to all sorts of soirees and receptions, right? I don't always accept. It seems like we've each got our own miracle worker. I know who he is, and I treat him very cautiously. Plus, we've already established that you don't report to me about your acquaintances. Besides, it was Papa who introduced him to me all those years ago. What's the real reason we're talking about Konechkin? Did Konechkin know our father long? Ever since you left to live with mother in Paris. Someone clearly had to clean up after you and Abauritze. Maybe there's no point in dwelling on the past. I saw him once more, at Port Praga. And what was he doing there? Does he have anything to do with the golem? Was he there because of the lady-in-waiting you were the last one to see before she died? Theoretically. No, I've had enough. Don't say another word. I desperately need to be alone right now. Oh, my cigarettes.